Noon in Fort Worth, Texas, a big weekend here, a big day for Kubota High Limit Racing as we're here on the property of the big track at Texas Motor Speedway where all three of NASCAR's main divisions are racing. Last night was the NASCAR Truck Series race, today the Xfinity race, and tomorrow the Cup race, and there are several fans that may be seeing their first ever sprint car race here tonight. The weather here today, as I mentioned, was slightly windy earlier on today. It's still a little bit windy right now, but the temperatures are very, very nice. Nothing to complain about on that front as far as that goes. So let's jump into the schedule. What are we going to be seeing on the track here tonight at Texas Motor Speedway? The first thing you'll see out on the speedway here in about for, uh, 15 or so minutes will be dirt draft hot laps, essentially practice sessions for the drivers with Kubota High Limit Racing. After that, we'll jump straight into Capital Custom Trailer Qualifying, which will set the drivers up for their heat races here tonight. There will be four heat races taking the top five finishers out of them and two of the drivers in each heat race will go to the dash and then we'll have our um, our sprint car dash spin our new uh, our new dash draw situation with a little bit of a spin wheel attached to it we'll explain more about that later on this evening following that we'll have a dash which will set up the first four rows of tonight's feature event we'll have a 12 lap b main taking the top four finishers to the back of the feature and we'll cap things off with a 30 lap twelve thousand dollar to win main event for the uncle chickens sipping whiskey Stockyard Stampede presented by Whiskey Myers. So great stuff here. It's going to be a fun night of action. One division on the program, and that is 410 Sprint Cars only. So, Texas Motor Speedway dirt track, a four-tenths mile oval. We came from a four-tenths mile oval back at the Golden Isles Speedway in Georgia. So, from one four-tenths mile to another, this is just the second ever four-tenths sprint car race to ever be ran here on the dirt at Texas Motor Speedway. Well, like I said, my name is Chase Rodman. I've got my broadcast partner down in the infield. We call him TLP. That is Tony Laporta. Tony, six weeks off, but we are finally back to racing. Are you excited or what? Chase Rodman, I am as excited as you can be to be here in the great Texas. It is so nice to be back in the Lone Star State. Talked about it six weeks, 49 days off. Drivers, teams, uh, Kubota High Limit Racing staff all had a lot of fun and done some pretty cool stuff in that time off. And we're going to get into that and talk to talk about that a little bit as the night goes on, especially since we're getting back on the road, kicking off our spring swing, as I like to call it. Drivers, teams, crew members, they all made the most out of it. They did so well. Signing on to be the title sponsor of High Limit Racing here in 2024. Round. We're track prep. Well, Tony, thank you very much down there. We're going to take a quick break if you're watching at home on Flow Racing. If you're here in the stands, we are about 10 minutes away from cars hitting the racetrack here for Kubota High Limit Racing. It's the Uncle Chicken's Sippin' Whiskey Stockyard Stampede presented by Whiskey Myers.
This broadcast is brought to you by Dirt Draft. As well as Capital Custom Trailers and Coaches. And Kubota. Race fans want to remind you, two-day ticket packages are now available for the Kubota High Limit Racing Championship Weekend right back here at the dirt track at Texas Motor Speedway. You can buy your discounted two-day packages now at highlimitracing.com or at the ticket office behind the main grandstands while you're here. And remember, all advanced ticket purchases are entered to participate in the Durst Dice Roll with a possibility of winning cold, hard cash at all of our events. Also wanted to mention the after concert concert tonight. Tim Duggar will be playing a concert on the trackside live stage outside of turn number one behind the grandstand. So after the race, if you feel like hanging out, we've got a concert and Tim Duggar will be playing up some tunes out there outside the grandstand. So uh, that's uh, something to look forward to a little bit later on. Now, something else uh, to look forward to. If you haven't really, you know, we haven't had much sprint car racing with High Limit in the last six weeks. Something to look forward to is this highlight video from the very last race at Gold Golden Isles Speedway, where Jacob Allen put on a clinic around the bottom of the racetrack to take down his first win of the season. Let's rewind six weeks to Golden Isles Speedway and see what happened. Let's go racing off of turn number four. We are green. Into turn number one, Tyler Courtney with the early race lead, but here comes Jacob Allen like we've seen him all night long. Powers around the outside, and Jacob Allen takes the lead to turn number three. Jacob Allen leads lap number one and 24 to go. Justin Peck quickly up to the second spot around the outside of Tyler Courtney. 18 to go this time by, and Allen stretches the lead out once again. And here comes Tyler Courtney driving back to the rear bumper of Justin Peck into turn number one. Allen now working on the lap traffic. They're side by side right in front of him. Got to make a big move here to the outside of Connor Morrell. Puts the 28 Emma lap down. Not quite yet. Morrell not going down easy. Down the front straightaway, side by side with the lap car is Jacob Allen. Here comes Justin Peck trying to look to his inside, but Allen's got momentum down the back stretch and he makes it around Connor Morrell. Jacob Allen now back to the inside of the racetrack. I think that was a good move right there to get at, back in line on the inside of the racetrack and let the guys behind them try and make their way around the outside of Connor Morrell. And now Tyler Courtney pounces on an opportunity there as Morrell missed the bottom and now they're side by side for second. Tyler Courtney and Justin Peck. Jacob Allen, a little mistake off of turn number four. Here comes Justin Peck back to the rear bumper into turn number one. Allen now makes it by the slower car of Cole Macedo as Macedo is now trying to let these two guys go by. He lets Justin Peck in as well. Allen washes up the racetrack. You might have a new leader off of turn number four. Justin Peck takes the lead. Justin Peck leads on lap number 11, 14 to go. Jacob Allen still right there, as is Tyler Courtney. Three car battle for the lead at Golden Isles. They all fight for the bottom off of turn number four. Here comes Sunshine. Sunshine gets by Allen. Now to the inside of Peck into turn number one. Peck shuts the door. Now Allen back around the outside. Great battle at the front of Golden Isles. Wow. Jacob Allen back to second. Now to the outside of Justin Peck off of turn four. Halfway single this time by. 12 to go for Justin Peck. Justin Peck trying to be the first Durst Dice Roll winner of the season. Looking for an extra two grand for him and an extra two grand for our buddy Chesley down in the grandstands. Jacob Allen not going away easily here as he works back to the outside of Dylan Norris right there with Justin Peck. Allen makes a mistake off of turn number four. Loses a little bit of ground. Now goes back to the outside of the racetrack. This is where we saw him win the heat race earlier on. Drove around the outside of Anthony Macri. And that speed right there off of two might be what he needs. To the outside of Justin Peck. you got to race for the lead down the front straightaway. Good stuff at the front of Golden Isle Speedway. Another lap car up the road. It's Brenham Crouch. Nose to tail down the back stretch for the race lead. Off of turn number four, Jacob Allen on the top. Can't quite get by the 13 of Justin Peck. Next time by, five laps to go for Peck. And Allen's got to run down the back straightaway. Tyler Courtney is there as well. And here comes Rico. Peck misses the bottom. Peck misses the bottom. And Jacob Allen takes the lead down the front straightaway. Jacob Allen back to the race lead into turn number one. Next time by, four to go. And here comes Sunshine. Tyler Courtney looking for the hat trick here tonight to the inside of Peck for second. Tyler Courtney back to fourth, and he's not done yet. Here comes Rico. Rico's right there as well. 
Allen goes to the top, and that might be what Tyler Cordy's hoping to see as he's got the NOS Energy Drink 7BC pinned to the bottom. White flag, one lap to go for Jacob Allen. Lap car up the road is Brenham Crouch. He goes to the top side of the racetrack. Here comes Sunshine. Might have one last ditch effort here on the last lap. Jacob, a big move to get by Brenham Crouch. What a move right there from Jacob Allen. And he will win. Deuces wild at Golden Isles Speedway. Tyler Courtney second, Justin Peck third, Rico Abreu fourth, and fifth will go to the five of Spencer Baston. And welcome back here to the dirt track at Texas Motor Speedway. Taking a look at the highlights from the last race with Kubota Highlander Racing at Golden Isles Speedway. Now let's take a look at the point standings, how they have sat here for the last six weeks. And you will find Tyler Courtney at the top of the heap in car number 7BC, 273 points. He has an 18-point advantage over the driver of car number 49, Brad Sweet. 22 points behind him is the 19 of Brett Marks, followed by Spencer Based in 37 points behind, and then Corey Day, 44 points behind in the fifth position. Parker Price Miller is sixth, Rico Abreu seventh, Kyle Larson is in eighth, and then Jacob Allen ninth, and Justin Peck round out the top ten right now with Kubota High Limit Racing as far as the point standings go. Well, we tried to hear from him earlier on this afternoon, but we had a couple of technical difficulties down there, but Tony Laporta, I think you've got things figured out down there in the infield. What is going on, buddy? Well, still working on things with Tony Laporta. We will certainly hear from him later on tonight as we get through our heat race interviews as well as our brand new uh, dash draw spin, which is going to be something fun to look forward to. It's uh, kind of like a roulette wheel that we have put together to help determine who will start where in tonight's dash. So uh, with that, uh, we got cars getting very close to getting onto the speedway. They're packing in, making the final adjustments to the racetrack right now. And then we will get 37 of the best 410 sprint car drivers out on the track here at the dirt track at Texas Motor Speedway. It's the Uncle Chicken Sippin' Whiskey Stockyard Stampede presented by Whiskey Myers.
And welcome back here to the dirt track at Texas Motor Speedway with Kubota High Limit Racing. It's the Uncle Chicken Sip and Whiskey Stockyard Stampede presented by Whiskey Myers. Want to remind you, race fans, that Kubota High Limit Racing will be joining NASCAR Race Weekend once again on May 3rd and 4th in Kansas City. Make sure to join us at Lakeside Speedway just 10 minutes away from Kansas Speedway for a big $50,000 to win weekend. All two-day adult ticket packages receive a free two-day pit pass upgrade at the track. Buy your tickets now at HighLimitRacing.com. Also want to remind you that the Kubota High Limit Racing season finale will take place right here at the dirt track at Texas Motor Speedway, and those tickets are available right now as well, not only at HighLimitRacing.com, but at the ticket office behind the main grandstands right now. So if you like the action you see later on this evening and you want to see more, well, we've got uh, more racing coming, at, coming your way here to the dirt track at Texas Motor Speedway. Now, I was mentioning a, a little bit ago that uh, we've got a couple of NASCAR drivers in the field here tonight that also uh, have wins at the big track at Texas Motor Speedway. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., he'll be driving the NOS Energy Drink number 17 JR tonight. He was a 2012 NASCAR Xfinity Series winner. Casey Kane, a 2006 NASCAR Cup Series winner. And Kyle Larson in the field tonight as well, 2021. He won the Cup race and the All-Star race at the big track at Texas. Chase Briscoe's in the field tonight as well. Does not have a win at the big track at Texas, but two second place finishes in the Xfinity Series. Tomorrow night, Kubota High Limit Racing travels just an hour down the road to the RPM Speedway in Crandall, Texas. Gates open at 4 p.m. Hot laps begin at 6.30 p.m. Pit passes and tickets are available at the track. So if you like what you're seeing here tonight and you want to see more just down the road, Crandall, Texas, RPM Speedway for another round of Kubota High Limit Racing. Now the Midweek Money Series, that begins on Tuesday with the Red Dirt Rumble at Red Dirt Raceway in Meeker, Oklahoma. Twenty thousand dollars on the line for all of the high rollers on a Tuesday night. Tickets available right now at HighLimitRacing.com. All advanced reserve seating purchases get a free pit pass upgrade at the track. Now, something that the Kubota High Limit Racing Sprint Car Series is doing in 2024 is having a driver each night that is a full-time competitor. They will uh, be the DJ of the night. So all of the songs that you will hear tonight after or from the heat races to the feature, those will be actually picked by one of the drivers that is racing in the field tonight. And the driver tonight that we picked is Brad Sweet. And if you don't know him, he loves a lot of country music. So if you like country music, you will definitely like Brad Sweet's play uh, playlist here this evening. This will be the 16th ever 410 Sprint Car Race held at the dirt track at Texas Motor Speedway. Uh, 14 of them coming with the World of Outlaws. The first one back on March 30th of 2000 when Greg Hodnett picked up the win. And the last of those on April 3rd, 2004, Brian Paulus was the winner. The last 410 Sprint Car Race was just last weekend here at the dirt track at Texas Motor Speedway with the Power Eye 410 Banded Outlaw Sprint Car Series. That was won by one of the drivers in the field tonight, Brent Marks, one of our high roller drivers. He was the winner here last week with Power Eye. Track record set back on 2001 at a 12.276 seconds set by Darren Pittman. So when we get into hot laps and qualifying later on, we will be trying to see if we can maybe beat that track record that has been here for 23 years back on 2001 at a 12.276 by Darren Pittman. We've got 37 410 Sprint cars back there in the pit area ready to hit the racetrack here as soon as we are ready uh, for them to get out there. And it should be fun. I'm excited to see what the lap times look like. Excited to see what the uh, racing conditions will look like for these drivers. Not much uh, racing as far as 410s go here at the dirt track at Texas. The last one, as we mentioned, was last week. But before that, back in 2004... Tonight's format... We'll start things off with hot laps, essentially a practice session. For those of you here tonight, I'm sure there's a lot of you potentially making your first ever appearance at a sprint car race. We'll have practice or hot laps coming up first. After that, we'll get into Capital Custom Trailer qualifying. And then we'll go into four heat races where the top five finishers will transfer straight to tonight's main event. 
Meanwhile, two drivers in each heat race will go to the dash. After all the heat races are over, we will spin a wheel to find out where everyone will start in that dash. And then we'll run a eight or a seven lap dash, which will line up the first four rows of tonight's feature event. We're on a 12 lap B main, which is going to take four cars to the feature event. And then a 30 lap $12,000 to win feature. Getting very close to seeing cars on the racetrack here at the dirt track at Texas Motor Speedway. If you're watching at home on Flow Racing, we'll take a quick commercial break and come back. And we are back here at the dirt track at Texas Motor Speedway. We are just about done getting the track packed in. We're actually going to call up the first two hot lap sessions and have them finish the track as far as getting it all packed in and race ready. So we have called up the drivers from hot lap sessions one and two. They will be making their way to the staging lane here in just a few moments before we can get them onto the speedway. Race fans, I want to remind you to stick around after the checkered flag tonight for a Tim Duggar concert out there on the trackside live stage just outside the turn one fencing area and behind the grandstands. If you want to learn more about Kubota Highlander Racing, get all the info and updates by following us on X, Facebook, and Instagram. You can also sign up to receive our High Rollers newsletter at highlimitracing.com.
The Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas swing of our 2024 season wraps up next weekend with a stop at Southern Oklahoma Speedway on Friday, April 19th, followed by Salina High Bank Speedway on Saturday, April 20th. We will then travel east to the Riverside International Speedway in West Memphis, Arkansas on Tuesday, April 23rd for a or for race number two of the Midweek Money Series. Tickets for all of those events are available at HighLimitRacing.com. Kubota Highland Racing continues on tomorrow night at the RPM Speedway, just about an hour away in Crandall, Texas. As the gates open up at 4 p.m., hot laps beginning at 6.30. There's a good look at one of our Kubota tractors making the rounds here at the Texas Motor Speedway dirt track. Also, race fans, want to remind you to please do not take down any of the banners here tonight. Uh, those banners, uh, we need those to stay up until at least the checkered flag falls on tonight's feature event. So please do not take the banners that are hanging up around the racetrack or behind the grandstands as well. So something interesting for sprint cars here tonight, they will enter the racetrack right there off of turn number two, but when they go off of the racetrack, and this is where it could be very interesting is during qualifying, is the drivers will have to actually go through the infield and take the tunnel underneath of turns one and two to get back to the pit area. That is something that I have personally never seen in my few years as a sprint car broadcaster and fan. And so the drivers, when they go through that tunnel, they're actually going to have to hit the wing slider and make sure that their wing is as flat as it could possibly be to make it through that tunnel. Tony Laporta, I think that you've got the batteries put in the microphone the right way uh, this time, right? I don't know, Chase. Does it sound like it? Yeah. It sure does. Okay, there we go. I finally figured out how to turn this thing on. Texas Motor Speedway. Happy to be with you. Chase, I'm happy to be here in the great state of Texas. That's what I was trying to say a little while ago when we kicked the show off, but... Nevertheless, we're working the track in right now. You've talked about it. We've got a lot of folks here who are probably taking in their first uh, winged 410 sprint car race ever. I got some great friends here in the uh, beautiful state of Texas that are joining us for the first time. So to them and to everybody else here, whether it's your first sprint car race, whether it's your 100th, whether it's your 500th, whichever race this is for you, thank you so much for coming out and hanging out with us here at Kubota High Limit Racing. Jace, you know me. I love being in the great state of Texas. Had lunch at Bucky's today because I'm watching my figure with these new uh, with these new fancy threads. You and I and Alex Brown are going to be rocking all season long. Um, but it's so cool to be here. Uh, this track, kind of like where we just were six weeks ago. I know, just were six weeks ago. We got Golden Isle Speedway. This track very similar. Only three drivers, any or at least only three of our high rollers, three of our full-time high limit racers have actually competed here. You've already hit on one of them. Brent Marks, he picked up a victory here with Power Eye back on April 5th. Brenham Crouch, a uh, Texan. He went quick time in qualifying here with Power Eye back on April 5th. And then Sunshine Tyler Courtney. He's raced here as well. But as far as our full-time high-limit racers who are chasing a championship here in 2024, this, the third stop on the schedule in 2024, a bit of a wild card uh, for a lot of our drivers that are chasing a championship here in 2024. You hit on it already. We got a beautiful Kubota tractor over there working the track in over in turns three and four. But it's a beautiful night in Texas, Chase. We're here for two nights. You already hit on it. We're going over to RPM Speedway in Crandall, Texas tomorrow night. But the sun is setting. The wind is starting to lay down, I believe. Sprint cars are going to come to life shortly, and we are going to go racing with the Kubota High Limit Racers here in the great state of Texas. Chase? Thank you very much, Tony. As you can see, there are cars making their way to the staging lane outside of turn number two. As we mentioned a few moments ago, those drivers in hot lap sessions one and two will come onto the racetrack, and they will help the push trucks get the track packed in. And when the drivers come out, we will make sure to let you know where they are from, who they are, the sponsors on the side of the cars, because we know that there are several fans here tonight taking in their first ever 410 sprint car race.
Tony, we talked about the unknown of Texas Motor Speedway, the unknown of Golden Isles Speedway. There is a lot of unknown just all together during this uh, Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas uh, sway or slate here. Not the sweet. What is that? Is that a word? The slate and the sweep, whatever you want to call it. A lot of the tracks we're coming up to here these next couple nights, uh, not a lot of guys have been to. So it's going to be kind of exciting to see who uh, picks it up quick. Yeah, absolutely, Jason. We were talking about it traveling here. You, Anthony Creeny, Brian Walker, and I, as we came down, uh, uh, to kick off what I'm kind of calling a bit of a spring southern swing, uh, if that's if that's a term you said you said a suite, and that's that's a you know that's a unique word. But uh, yeah, we were talking about it. Those of us on the staff side with Kubota Highlander Racing, a bunch of these are going to be brand new tracks for um, guys like Anthony Creeny and Brian Walker and yourself and I. So not only do we get to see a bunch of new tracks here uh, in 2024, a lot of these drivers and teams do. And yeah, just like what a lot of the crew chiefs and the drivers were telling me back in Georgia six weeks ago when we visited Golden Isle Speedway. Those guys didn't know what to expect when they got there. And the majority of the teams and drivers who are full time with Kubota Highlander Racing, they've said the exact same thing. Joe Mooney on Anthony Macri's car, that team not a full time high limit entry, but they hit a lot of events with us. Joe took a look at turns three and four yesterday. He was just making slight observations, said, hey, it looks a little bit tighter, a little bit more narrow through three and four. He was actually having that discussion with Bobby Allen. Boy, what a run Jacob Allen has had, had recently. Jace, you talked about about him in your video series that you've been producing lately. Jacob has been doing a ton of racing in the time off uh, since we last raced 49 days ago at Golden Isles Speedway here with Kubota High Limit Racing. But uh, his grandfather, Bobby and Joe Mooney, Anthony Macri's crew chief, they were just talking about the fact you know, they don't know what to expect here. This wind is going to throw these wing sprint cars for quite a curveball as well working this track in everybody is just waiting to fire these things up and get going and as i walk around down here in victory lane i stick my head around the victory lane backdrop and chase i know you can see him from way up there in the penthouse suite but we got race cars on the track brother yeah, they are getting fired off right now. And the first driver to get fired off is the driver out of St. Mary's, New South Wales, Australia. Driving the Dirty Air, Ike's Performance, Christensen Family Foundation, Donna's Pool and Patio, Haas Hollage. Number 25, that's the madman, Kerry Madsen. And behind him, making his way off of turn number four, one of our high roller drivers. He's out of Monrovia, Indiana, the Avanti Windows and Doors, Big Spring Car Wash, Water Treatment by Design, RKL Paving. Number 13, that's Justin Peck. Justin Peck in car number 13. Making his way down the front straightaway now. The driver is out of Olive Branch, Mississippi. The NOS Energy Drink, West Tennessee Expediting, Hut Brothers Pizza, Maxima Race Oils, Frozen Farmer, Easy Go. Number 17, Junior, it's Ricky Stenhouse, Jr. And behind him, rolling into turn number one out of Tuttle, Oklahoma. The select coatings, Outlaw Wings, Kaiser Wheels, Rod and Supply, High Side Racewear, number 2C of Wayne Johnson. Wayne Johnson in car number 2C. Another one of our high rollers rolling down the front straight at Lebanon, Indiana. The True Timber Camo, nice Crete and Landis block. JRC Transportation, high performance lubricants number five. That's 25-year-old Spencer Baston. Spencer Baston and car number five. Rolling into turn number one now from Visalia, California, the Commercial Edge, NDT, New Direction Transport, b &L Holdings, Elliott's Custom Trailers, Ridge Development number eight. That's Corey Eliason. Corey Eliason in car number eight. Coming to us from Apollo, Pennsylvania, the Mosides Motorsports, Ducati of Pittsburgh, Mike Kleck Paving, Diesel Property Management, Mav Motorsports number 42. That's Cy Lynch. Cy Lynch in car number 42. Making his way through turn number two now at a Claiborne, Texas, the Taco Casa KH Suspension, Pro One Safety and Race Products, Fox Drywall, Best Deal Services, number 01J, that's Jeb Sessoms. Jeb Sessoms in car number 01J. And from Jacksonville, Oregon, the Boss Superstore, Shane DeWall Trucking, S-Tech USA, Carbon Works, Canopy Country, number 18T, that's Tanner Holmes. Tanner Holmes in car number 18T. And from Myerstown, Pennsylvania, the M&M Painting and Construction, McGrewBid.com, Baps Paint, Livewire Customs, number 19. The 33-year-old driver is Brent Marks. Brent Marks in car number, car number 19. 
And one more car rolling into turn number three now out of Angola, Indiana. The Sun Dollar Restoration, Ford Performance, Sage Fruit, Race Routine Foundation, Routine Management, number 26 of Zeb Wise. Zeb Wise in car number 26. Another car rolling track side out of Calera, Oklahoma. The Oklahoma Truck Driving Academy, LS Construction and Roofing, High Plains Building Division, Victory Fuel, DRC Legacy Foundation, number 88R of Ryder LaPlante. Ryder LaPlante in the 88R. So the drivers will slowly pack the track in here a little bit there and we'll pull a couple of them off the speedway. The drivers in hot lap session number one will then take to the track by themselves. They'll get a couple of practice laps in and then they will pull back into the infield. We'll get the second group out and then we'll go on from there. And with tonight, with 37 cars in the pit area, we will have split qualifying, meaning that the 37 drivers are split in half and qualifying group A and qualifying group B will qualify against themselves and they will be lined up in the first, or the group A, I should say, will be in, in uh, hot lap, or sorry, heat races number one and two. Meanwhile, qualifying group B will be in heat races three and four. There is Wayne Johnson, the driver out of Tunnel, Oklahoma. He was second here at the Texas Motor Speedway dirt track with the ASCS National Tour back in 2012 and in 2017. He was fourth here last week with the Power Eye 410 Sprint Car Series. So Wayne Johnson has had some track time here at Texas very recently. Spencer Baston in car number five, rolling his way down the back straightaway. Baston comes into the night, currently fourth in Kubota High Limit Racing Point standings. Baston making his Texas Motor Speedway debut here tonight. His best finish so far this year was a fifth on uh, both nights over at the Golden Isles Speedway. One more car making his way onto the racetrack in turn number two. The driver is out of Kokomo, Indiana, the Chalk Sticks Torsion Bars Townline Variety. Indy Race Parts High Performance Lubricants number 9P. That's the law firm, Parker Price Miller. Parker Price Miller in car number 9P. PPM, another one of our full time high roller drivers, making his way into turn number three right now. Parker did not do any racing during the six week break for Kubota High Limit Racing. Was, I know he went to a couple of uh, March Madness games and did some things like that. Uh, did not do any racing, but here he is back behind the wheel at the Texas Motor Speedway dirt track. And there is Ricky Stenhouse Jr. rolling down the flag or rolling across the flag stand right now. The NOS Energy Drink number 17 Jr. Two second place finishes last week with USCS. Those races at the Carolina Speedway and Cherokee Speedway out there on the East Coast. Tony Laporta, what's going on? You know, Chase, I don't know. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay down here. I'm down by the tunnel that these cars are going to come underneath or go through uh, once hot laps and qualifying all wrap up. But before we talk about that, you just talked about Parker Price Miller. I believe you said that he did not do any racing over the six-week break from Kubota High Limit. Is that correct? That is correct. And Tony, if you look up towards the sands, we're looking at you right now. Get, oh. no, turn, go back to your left a little bit. You're behind a pole. Uh, there Dean you Mills, are. Dean Mills, Jeff Converse, bringing, uh, bringing you me from very far away. But Parker Price Miller, yes, he may not have raced as Brent Marks and Corey Elison hit the tunnel down here. That is crazy to see race cars go through a tunnel. That was close right there, actually. From up here, it looked like it was close when you, Brent went through there. You were saying they got to lay their wing all the way back to get through there. Is that what you were saying? Yeah, that's what somebody, I think Blake Hahn was telling me that down in the pit area earlier on, that he was here last week for that power eye race, and they were told that it's about, I think it's 10 feet maybe is the is the, at the top of that thing, and he had to roll his wing all the way forward, so it's it's pretty close. So it's kind of like when you stand up through the sunroof going through the drive through at Wendy's. It's like me trying to walk through any race hauler in the pit area tonight. Yeah, dangerous, not a good idea. But my point is, Parker Price Miller, I, I, you know, I found some really cool stuff out walking through the pit area, and I, I kind of wanted to save this as Parker goes by us right now to head through the tunnel. Uh, some media members just walked through there. I hope they are staying very close to the wall. Um, Parker Price Miller, uh, Brad Alexander on Brenham Crouch's car, Tyler Rance bottom on uh, Brenham Crouch's car, uh, Tyler Tessmaker on Zeb Weiss's car, and a few other crew guys and drivers, Chris Windham and some of the Vermeer Motorsports team, 
a lot of those guys raced. Parker Price Miller didn't over the break, but you know what they all did do, Chase? They laced up the skates and they played a little bit of pickup hockey in Fishers and Carmel, Indiana. They have a small, like, they don't even want to call it a league, but they have some uh, just kind of drop in hockey, they call it. And they play together a couple times a week in Fishers and Carmel, which is just north of downtown Indianapolis, Indiana, when they're all back home together. Austin Wenrick gets in the net and plays a little bit of goalie. Anthony Carini even drops in every once in a while, I'm told, to make a celebrity appearance. But yeah, Parker, he might not have been racing, but he was staying sharp by getting out on the ice and doing a little bit of dancing. Yeah, that's awesome. They call that the beer league, Tony. So I would give it a league. It's they call it the beer league when it comes to just kind of random people playing hockey. But that is very, very cool. I have heard about that. I would like to definitely witness that at some point as we are green flag racing here in dirt draft hot laps. So finally getting cars up to speed here at the dirt track at Texas Motor Speed. Let's see what the lap times will look like here in session number one. Coming across the line for lap number one in a 16-2-2-4. Kerry Manson is the fastest right now, so looking to pick up a ton of time. We're about four seconds off of the track record right now. There's a good look at Cy Lynch all the way from Apollo, Pennsylvania. He's going to be running, I believe, every single race in the month of April with Kubota High Limit Racing. That's going to be fun to see him around the Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas area. And Cy Lynch now has the best time so far at a 15.946. Spencer Baston is second fastest at 16.212. Kerry Manson, 16.224. Nobody able to jump into the 15-second bracket with Cy Lynch. His lap time of 15.946 is still towards the top of the speed chart. You can tell the track is certainly a little bit greasy out there right now, and they have been pouring the water to this thing for the last couple of nights to get prepared for this Uncle Chicken's Sippin' Whiskey Stockyard Stampede presented by Whiskey Myers. Yellow lights come on here in hot lap session number one. And Kerry Madsen does take that top spot back at a 15.905, 15.905. Kerry Madsen fastest so far in hot laps. Cy Lynch, 15.946. Spencer Baston in third at a 16.156. Then Ricky Stenhouse Jr., 16.298. And Justin Peck at a 16.4. 1-1. want to say thanks to our friends at Dirt Draft for sponsoring Hot Laps all year long with Kubota High Limit Racing. Draft will be the presenting sponsor of Hot Laps for every High Limit Racing event in 2024. The Dirt Draft app allows you to play against hundreds of dirt racing fans across the country. Simply select five drivers each night while staying under a $100,000 salary cap and accumulate points in the process. Use those points in the speed shop to buy all kinds of things. Download the Dirt Draft app or visit dirtdraft.com for more information. Dirt Draft, definitely a really fun app if you are a big fan of dirt racing and uh, you like to gamble a little bit like I do, and that is the perfect combination. Dirt racing, and it's not real money on Dirt Draft, but it kind of pretends like it is, so it feels like gambling. Uh, I'm, I might need to call 1-800-GAMBLER. So we get hot lap session number two underway. Brent Marks, the first one to get pushed off, and Marks, the most recent winner here at the Texas Motor Speedway Dirt Track, got the victory last Friday night with the Power Eye 410 Sprint Car Series. That was the first 410 race here since 2004. There's the young driver all the way from Jacksonville, Oregon. You may know him from his very famous YouTube channel, the 18T of Tanner Holmes. Rolling down the front straightaway right now, he has got fans all over North America. Corey Eliason driving the Origin Sun Racing number eight car got a win during that six week break for Kubota High Limit Racing. That came at the BAPS Motor Speedway in Pennsylvania. Holding off a late charge, I believe it was from Troy Wagaman Jr. to get the victory there. And there is Zeb Wise, the All Star Circuit of Champions titleist from 2023. Zeb comes into the evening 12th in the High Limit Racing point standings as he makes his Texas Motor Speedway debut here tonight. 
And there is the young driver out of Calera, Oklahoma, Ryder LaPlante. Was 19th here with the Power Eye 410 Series last weekend, and we expect to see him a lot here over the month of April as uh, High Limit Racing goes to Texas, obviously, as well as Oklahoma and Arkansas. And there is Parker Price Miller. You heard Tony talking about him having the Beer League hockey, uh, hockey team or whatever you want to call it there the last couple of weeks during the downtime. Parker Price Miller comes in tonight sixth in the point standings. He's got a best finish of fourth at Golden Isles Speedway back in February. Cars are slowly pacing around the racetrack, and you might think we're waiting for them to get all fired up and things like that. Well, we certainly are, but it does help when the cars are pacing around slowly like this to help get that racetrack kind of ran in a little bit faster. Just going around at slow speeds has shown to really pick up the lap times here in dirt track racing. Corey Eliasson pointing at something. Might be some debris on the racetrack here on the front straightaway. And indeed there is one of the Kubota High Limit Racing officials picking up what looked to be maybe a panel off of one of the cars on the front straightaway. Tanner Holmes rolling into turn number one right now. We expect to see him in a lot of races coming up as well for Kubota High Limit Racing. It's going to be a big year for that driver as he's racing mainly out here on the road in the Midwest, far away from Jacksonville, Oregon, as we go green. Hot lap session number two presented by Dirt Draft. Brent Marks on lap one, quickly to the top, and now Corey Eliasson overtakes him at a 15-6-0-1. Caution, lights come on. We got one slow in turn four. That is Tanner Holmes. Tanner Holmes in trouble over there in the Shane DeWalt trucking number 18 T cars. He pulls into the infield in the fourth corner. Tanner Holmes also sponsored by The Boss as he was having an autograph session, a meet and greet yesterday over at the boss. I don't know where that uh, location is at, but a meet and greet here in the state of Texas with some of his fans. Off to a tough start here tonight, the dirt track at Texas Motor Speedway. Green lights come back on. Dirt draft hot lap session number two is back underway. Brent Marsh now sets the bar at a 15-1-2-3, nearly into the 14-second bracket for car number 19. Corey Lyson, 15-2-1-0. There's Zeb Wise. He currently sits in the fourth spot here in hot laps at a 15-3-5-0. White flag displayed from the flag stand. Here comes the checkered. And Marks is going to jump into the 14-second bracket at a 14-8-2-2 on his final time around. So yellow lights come on. Checkered flag is out. Brent Marks in car number 19 is the fastest now in dirt draft hot laps at a 14.822. Parker Price Miller, second, 15.145. Corey Eliasson, third, 15.189. Zeb Wise, fourth, 15.350. And Ryder LaPlante in the 88R is fifth at a 15.814. Cars making their way down the hill there and into the tunnel. That'll bring out Dirt Draft hot lap session number three. Chase, just before you do get into introducing this hot laps group, I think it's important to mention you talked about Tanner Holmes, the driver in the 18T, who had trouble over on the back straightaway and had to come back into the infield. It is uh, very cool and very interesting that he promotes himself so well and has the YouTube channel going as well as he does. But to me, that's not the most interesting part about that 18T and Tanner Holmes, the young man from the West Coast, the Pacific Northwest up in, uh, up in Oregon. The most interesting thing to me about that driver and that car and that team is that 
his crew chief, his car chief, his lead mechanic, his right hand on that race car, you know where I'm going with this, is his sister, Carly Holmes, and she is the lead mechanic on that car. They have Blake helping him out on tires. He came over from Shark Racing at the end of last year. But Carly Holmes, Tanner's sister, is the lead mechanic on that race car. Two very, you know, kind of young 20-somethings, if they're even that old, going around the country racing this 410 Sprint car, brother and sister. That's a story you just don't hear very often. Yeah, I think Carly is like 16 or 17. She is an extremely hard worker, got into a terrible Sprint car accident last year, which actually broke uh, her leg and then got into an hour incident uh, earlier this year, which took her out. And she was on crutches there for a while, but she is back to full strength and helping out on that car. Let's take a look at the drivers that are in this next Dirt Draft Hot Lap session. We've got the driver of Indianapolis, Indiana, the NOS Energy Drink, Elliott's Custom Trailers and Carts, number 7BC. That's Sunshine Tyler Courtney. And passing him around the outside right now. The Andy's Frozen Custard, Casey's FVP, Mountain Dew, Mountain Dew Overdrive, Impact Signs, Ditzfield Transfer number 21 of Blackjack Brian Brown. Brian Brown in car number 21. And from St. Helena, California, the Rico Abreu Kerbag at Janian Racing, Whiskey Myers, Messia Valley Transportation, El Bandido, Yankee Tequila, Hunt Family, number 24 of Rico Abreu. And from Canton, Illinois, the NOS Energy Drink, Zip Bonds, Logan Contractor Supply, Elliott's Custom Trailers, TK Concrete, number 55. That's Chris Windham. Chris Windham in car number 55. And from Fort Worth, Texas, the PAX Mobile Crusher, Flatland Manufacturing, Smith Titanium, All Import Auto Parts, Gary Floyd Holmes, number 44 of Jason Howell. Jason Howell in the 44. Final car in this session from Houghton, Louisiana, the Berkham Contracting, Griffith Truck and Equipment, Buddy Lee's Transmission, Performance Powder Coat, number 6A of Cody Adams. Cody Adams in the 6A. Green flag is out. Dirt Draft, hot lap session number three. And Tyler Courtney, the current points leader with Kubota Highland Racing, straight to the top here in hot laps, 14-747 for Sunshine. There is Chris Windham making his Texas Motor Speedway debut as Rico Abreu now takes the top spot away to 14-729. Rico Abreu, there's Cody Adams in car number six, the driver of Houghton, Louisiana. We expect to see him quite a bit here during the month of April. Not many sprint car drivers coming from the state of Louisiana. As the white flag is displayed from the flag stand here at the Texas Motor Speedway dirt track. Checkered flag comes out. Looks like nobody's going to be able to pass the time by Rico Abreu as the yellow lights come on. Checkered flag is out, and it's car number 24 fastest at 14.729, followed by Tyler Courtney at 14.747. Brent Marks third at 14.822. Chris Windham fourth at a 14.863. And Brian Brown at a 15.008. Fifth quick here in Dirt Draft Hot Laps. Parker Price, Miller, Corey Eliason, Zeb Wise, Ryder LaPlante, and Cody Adams, the top 10. Dirt Draft Hot Lap Session number four making its way trackside. These will be the drivers in qualifying flight B. First one onto the racetrack. Many of you might know them out of Sunnyvale, Texas, the High Breeder Foundation, TrueNorth.bet, CigarPort.ca, High Performance Lubricants number 15H. That's Sam Haferteep Jr. Sam Haferteep Jr. in the 15H. And from Liberty Hill, Texas, the Baxter Builders, Dirtco Media House, K1 Race Gear, Smith Titanium, Factory Cane Shock, Shell Shock, number 25B of Blaine Baxter. Blaine Baxter in the 25B. And from Lubbock, Texas, that is the High Plains Building Division, Carbon Safety Technologies, Lubbock Wrecker, Five Nights Truck Accessories, ShopTruckParts.com, number one of Brenham Crouch. 
Brenham Crouch in car number one. And the five-time World of Outlaws champion making his way down the front straightaway out of Grass Valley, California. The Casey Kane Racing with Mike Kerb, Napa Auto Parts, Brumos Collection, Maxima Race Wheels, number 49, the big cat, Brad Sweet. Brad Sweet in car number 49. From Sepulpa, Oklahoma, the Aces Up Sim Sports, Smiley's Race Products, Glenn Steyer's Racing, CSR Garage, Premier Machine number 52. That's Blake Hahn. Blake Hahn in car number 52. And from Indianapolis, Indiana, the Encore Builders Shop House Racing number 17. That's Zach Hampton. Zach Hampton tonight in car number 17. Those are the drivers in Dirt Draft Hot Lap Session number four. As they are got the they got the green lights on and they are set to get under power. These drivers for the first time here tonight. Sam Hafer Team Jr., a four-time ASCS National Tour winner here at the Texas Motor Speedway Dirt Track. He was fifth here last week with the 410 under the hood with the Power Ice Sprint cars. And there is Brad Sweet making his debut here at the Texas Motor Speedway Dirt Track. He has been on the big track before, finished 10th with the NASCAR Xfinity Series a couple years ago. Actually, it's been quite a few years ago. And there is Zach Hampton getting the call late last week to fill in here for Vout Hoffmans. If things go well tonight, Hampton might be able to jump in that car tomorrow at RPM Speedway as well. There's Blaine Baxter, the young driver out of Liberty Hill, Texas, formerly from California. As Brenham Crouch is the fastest now in Dirt Draft Hot Laps at a 14.561. Good lap there for the local Texas racer, 14.561. Crouch, one of our full-time high rollers, but from the state of Texas, from Lubbock. As the checkered comes out, yellow lights are on. Crouch's 14.508 is better than Rico Abreu in second at a 14.729. Brad Sweet, third quick, 14.740. Tyler Courtney at 14.747. And Brent Marks was fifth at a 14.822. Next fastest in that last session was Blake Hahn in sixth, and then the Sam Haper team junior seventh. They'll make their way through the tunnel and head back to their trailers. We've got another group of cars making their way onto the racetrack right now for Dirt Draft Hot Laps. Led out by the driver out of Minden, Nevada, the Smith Titanium, Factory Kane, Maximum Race Wheels, Messina Valley Transportation, Hall of Vodka number 88 of Tanner Thorson. Tanner Thorson in car number 88. And from Liberal, Kansas, the Bybee Electric Trucks Plus, Mel Hamilton Racing, Donaut Racing Engines, Camping Chaos, number 36 of Jason Martin. Jason Martin in car number 36. From Dillsburg, Pennsylvania, the JNS Classics, Valley Supply, CND Rigging, Class 1 Transportation, number 39M, it's Anthony Macri. Anthony Macri in car number 39M. From Crandall, Texas, the Precision Repro Graphics, Irrational Metalworks, Smiley's Race Products, Classic Starter and Alternator number four. That's Austin Mundy. Austin Mundy in car number four. And from El Paso, Texas, the Taco Costa, Messi Valley Transportation, Berkham Contracting, Scott Baylor Racing Engines number J2 of John Carney II. John Carney II in the J2. And the final driver in Dirt Draft Hot Lap Session, number five, out of Elk Grove, California, the Flow Racing, Finley Farms, HendrickCars.com, Falcons Brothers Trucking, Glenn Styers Racing, JVI Group number 57, it's Young Money, Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson in car number 57. Green lights come on. We are underway with Dirt Draft Hot Lap Session, number five. There is Anthony Macri, and there is Tanner Thorson, who picked up a win during the break for Kubota High Limit Racing. It was in a midget at the Port City Raceway with Power Eye. Also ran 16th with the World of Outlaws last week at the Arrowhead Speedway. There's Kyle Larson, was quick time today at the big track for the Cup race tomorrow. White flag comes out. Nobody able to jump up to the top of the speed charts as there goes Kyle Larson up to second quick at a 14.589. 
But Brenham Crouch still the best at 14.508. As the checkered flag comes out, a little smoke coming out of the back of John Carney's car as he went to turn number one. Yellow's out. Checkered flag comes out from the flag stand. And the fastest driver overall tonight in Dirt Draft Hot Laps driving car number one. It's Brenham Crouch at a 14.508. Second quick in that group at a 14.589 was Kyle Larson. And third quick from that group, the 88 of Tanner Thorson at a 14.645. Rico Abreu fourth at a 14.729. Brad Sweet fifth at a 14.740. Tyler Courtney, Jason Martin, Brent Marks, Blake Hahn, and Sam Hayford Teep Jr. rounding out the field as far as the top 10 goes in Dirt Draft Hot Laps. Next up, it'll be Capital Renegade Custom Trailers and Coaches qualifying. Coming up here, two drivers at a time, two laps. This will set up where they start in tonight's heat races. Capital Renegade Custom Trailers and Coaches is the number one Renegade Toter Home dealer and the number one Intech trailer dealer. No one sells more Toter Homes or Intech trailers than Capital Renegade Custom Trailers and Coaches. If you are in the market for a Toter Home or a trailer, trust the people that are in the pits with you and that support the sport. Check out their complete lineup at www.capitalrenegade.com. Well, race fans, I may have jumped the gun as uh, we are going to have our first and I believe the second group of cars in Dirt Draft Hot Laps come back onto the racetrack here. Uh, when they went out on the racetrack, ladies and gentlemen, they were running 16-second lap times, and the drivers at the end of hot laps were in the mid-14. So the track was much, much different when these drivers were out there earlier on in Dirt Draft Hot Laps, and so we're going to allow them to come back onto the racetrack and get a better look at this speedway with its current configuration with how fast it is. So we're going to bring hot lap sessions one and two back onto the racetrack, and then we'll bring out hot lap session number six, and then we should be ready to go for Capital Renegade Custom Trailers and Coaches qualifying as we're underway here for the second round of hot laps for the first session. Once again, these drivers were way down the order from earlier on. See if any of them can beat the time set by Brenham Crouch at a 14.508. Kerry Madsen, the 25 car, a former track record holder here at the Texas Motor Speedway Dirt Track. Got the call last week that he will be driving this Deuce 5 Motorsports car on a couple of occasions this year. And there goes Spencer Baston in car number five. He goes to the top of the speed charts at a 14.440. Checkered flag comes out. Spencer based it in car number five. Now the fastest at a 14-440. Brenham Crouch still second. Kyle Larson third. Tanner Thorson fourth. Rico Abreu in fifth. In that group, Kerry Manson jumped up to 10th quick in car number 25. Tony, what's going on? Well, Chase, I just, you know, you brought up a great point about how when we last saw these cars, they were running 16 second lap times. And now we're down in what, the low 14s right now. And you've hit on it already. I've talked about it. I've got some friends that are visiting, uh, hitting their first sprint car race ever. Kind of just get into, you know, what's going on and why they're getting to go back out. The track changes over the course of a race. You know, this isn't this isn't pavement. It changes rapidly as the sun sets, the wind blows, the amount of water that was put on at the beginning of the day. And those 16 second lap times are getting much quicker now. And, you know, of course, feel free to, to step in and correct me, but it really comes down to the fact that they get a lot of water on the track, which typically wet is heavy and heavy is fast. But you're, you, there is a sweet spot and you can do it too much. So. As these drivers work around the track here at Texas Motor Speedway in these very short three, four lap hot lap sessions, they're burning off that top layer of really wet, really heavy, and they're getting into more of this sweet spot where the track's really fast. And then as the night progresses, depending on what the track crew decides to do with water, we will see the track slow down as the track hopefully will become more slick and that causes drivers to back off the gas a little bit, have to kind of drive the thing with their right foot. But there's a big reason these lap times are changing, and that's why these cars are coming back out on track for a second look at it. 
Uh, you are 100 percent right, Tony. And, you know, it's uh, it's we, these are things that we need to mention here tonight because we know that there are so many people here tonight from the big track watching NASCAR this weekend that have maybe never seen a sprint car race here this evening. So we need to remind them that, yes, this track will look complete. If you took a picture of it right now and then a picture of it after 30 laps in tonight's feature event, it'll look like uh, you are at a completely different place. It's going to change so very much throughout the night. And that's what makes sprint car racing and dirt track racing over. Overall, in my opinion, the best form of, of motorsports, the most exciting form of motorsports. And I'm sure some of these people here tonight have already just seen the raw speed that these guys have around this racetrack. They haven't even seen them in competitive action quite yet. So hopefully uh, we make some new fans here tonight with Kubota High Limit Racing. Hot lap session number two uh, is back onto the racetrack. We've got Corey Eliason out there in car number eight. There's the 26 of Zeb Wise. Also have the 88R of Ryder LaPlante, the 01J of Jeb Sessoms, and the 9P of Parker Price Miller. Track still has some speed to it. We saw it in the last session. Spencer Baston in the five went 14.440 to take over the top time. As I mentioned, oh, we got one more coming out of the racetrack. Looks like repairs have been made to the 18T of Tanner Holmes, so he will make his way back onto the racetrack right now. There is Ryder LaPlante, one of the drivers that's made his way up from the micro sprints now into sprint cars. And there's Tanner Holmes. That car does come to life, so that's a good sign for him. I'm sure you will see a YouTube video from his channel about tonight's race here in the next couple of days. Green lights come on. We're back underway with Dirt Draft Hot Laps to see if anybody could beat the time by Spencer Basin at 14 at 440. Time's now coming across the screen here. We'll see what guys can do. And you can tell the track is moving up a lot, especially in turns three and four. Parker Price Miller, third quick. Now Zeb Wise, second quick at a 14 461. Zeb Wise just two one hundredths off the lap time of Spencer Baston. So track still has a lot of speed to it here. And there goes Corey Lyson. He goes up to the top at a 14 405. Yellow lights come on, and we've seen the fastest lap we've seen so far tonight from car number eight, Corey Eliason at a 14.405. Spencer Baston still second at a 14.440. Then Zeb Wise in the 26 at a 14.461. Brenham Crouch, 14.508. And in fifth, the 9P of Parker Price Miller at 14.570. So a couple more drivers coming onto the racetrack here for Dirt Draft Hot Laps. And these drivers we have not seen so far here tonight. This is the first time that they have hit the racetrack. This should be our final hot lap group of the night. On the racetrack now, the young driver out of Clovis, California. The Sander Engineering, Four Seas Construction, Autry Plumbing, Sincal, Driven to Save Lives, number 14. That's Corey Day. Corey Day in car number 14. And to his outside, the most recent winner with Kubota High Limit Racing from, from Hanover, Pennsylvania, the Pels Tire Service, RF Knox Company, the Auto Barn, Weinbrenner Motor Service, Lawrence's Body Shop number 1A of Jacob Allen. Jacob Allen in car number 1A. Also on the speedway, making his way off at turn number four. He has finally made it to the States, ladies and gentlemen, out of Alice Springs, Northern Territory, Australia. The Mobile One, Toyota Racing Development, Roth Enterprises, HR Livestock Transportation, number 83 of James McFadden. Also rolling down the front straightaway now, out of Sykeston, Missouri, the Inland Rigging, Woodland Auto Display, Marsh Ant Cattle Company, Shurkin LLC, MP Environmental, number 73, that's 100%, Hunter Schurenberg. Hunter Schurenberg in car number 73. And behind him, qualified fifth for the NASCAR Cup race earlier on this afternoon. 
The driver is out of Mitchell, Indiana. The Mahindra Tractors, Dorset Automotive, Ford Performance, Die Edge, Hall Brothers Trucking, number 5B of Chase Briscoe. Chase Briscoe in car number 5B. And final car in this session out of Enumclaw, Washington. The Casey Kane race with Mike Kerr, Brumos Collection, Factory Kane Shocks, Kane Screen Print number 9 of Casey Kane. Casey Kane in car number 9. Green lights come on for these drivers. Their first time seeing the Texas Motor Speedway dirt track. There is Corey Day, came into this weekend fifth in the Kubota High Limit Racing point standings. And there is Jacob Allen, ninth in the point standings and the most recent winner, that being at Golden Isle Speedway. Corey Day goes to the top, 14, 337 in the 14 car. And there is James McFadden. Great to see him here as he missed the first four races of the season due to visa issues trying to get over here from Australia. Jacob Allen now to the top of the speed charts at a 14301. Checkered flag is out. Caution lights about to come on here in our final hot lap session of the night. And how about it, ladies and gentlemen? In the final hot lap session, he turns the fastest lap of all. Car number 1A, Jacob Allen, 14-3-0-1. Corey Day, second quick, 14-3-3-7. Corey Eliason, 14-4-0-5. Spencer Basin at 14-4-4-0. And Brent Marks, fifth quick, 14-4-49. Behind them, Zeb Wise, Brenham Crouch, Parker Price Miller, Kyle Larson, and Casey Kane rounding out the top 10. Well, next week on Flow Racing, here are some of the events that you can watch. We've got plenty of Kubota High Limit Racing. The next race you'll see April 16th at the Red Dirt Raceway, the first race of the Midweek Money Series. Also, the Lucas Oil MLRA Late Models at Cedar County Speedway on April 18th. A couple of other races there as well to check out. Flow Racing has a lot of events. The PDRA Mid-Atlantic Showdown, Virginia Motorsports Park, that on April 18th through the 20th. And then Kubota Highland Racing back at it on Friday, April 19th at Southern Oklahoma Speedway. 410 Sprint Cars, a weekly show at Lincoln Speedway in Pennsylvania on April 20th. And plenty more to check out. There isn't a night of the week, I believe, that you can't go on Flow Racing and see a couple of races. So next up onto the racetrack, you can see cars getting gathered up there outside of turns one and two. We will have a cop Capital Custom Trailers qualifying. And real quick, before we get cars onto the racetrack, uh, for those of you that might really not know what qualifying is or you want to hear more about qualifying, we asked the drivers that are full-time with Kubota Highland Racing what they think about qualifying and how important it is to your race night. In sprint car racing, qualifying is probably the most important two important laps that you turn in the night. Qualifying sets your night. You have to qualify good if you want a chance to win. I feel like qualifying is the most, some of the most intense points of the night. And it's just the track's the fastest that it'll be all night long. It's you versus the racetrack. It sets you up for the whole night. And uh, you, know, you absolutely go as hard as you possibly can uh, for two laps and try to get the best possible time that you can. It's definitely not the easiest part of the night. If anything, it's the most nerve wracking because it's what sets up your night. So uh, you're trying as, as hard as you can be to be perfect. These sprint cars are crazy, so they're hard to make a perfect lap. If you get pinned in the back, it's really hard to overcome that with the, with the talent and all the com competitors in this field. So. On top of that, it's just, it's so intense because you know 90% of the tracks we, we go to, it's, it's wide open and you can't, you can't leave a hundredth of a, hundredth of a second out there because it's, it's so tight between, between the field. You have to be on your game, you have to run hard, you can't, you know, make mistakes, you're trying to push the limit. That's, you're probably honestly pushing the limit the most throughout the night in qualifying just to try and lay down that fast lap to, Start off on the heat race, have your whole night go smooth, hopefully, from then on.
A great piece put together by the guys at Flow Racing as we are set to go for qualifying tonight. Brought to you by Capital Custom Trailers. Two cars at a time on the racetrack. First car out there out of Olive Branch, Mississippi. The NOS Energy Drink, West Tennessee Expediting, Hub Brothers Pizza, Maximum Race Oils, Frozen Farmer, Easy Go, number 17, Junior, Tricky Stenhouse, Jr. And also on the speedway from Monrovia, Indiana, the Avanti Windows and Doors, Big Spring Car Wash, Water Treatment by Design, RKL Paving, number 13, a Justin Peck. Lap number one for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is a 14-472. 1-4-472, Justin Peck. He overtakes him. That's the best time we've seen all night. 14-077 for Justin Peck. Lap number two for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is better. 14-434. Still second quick. Justin Peck on lap number two is a little bit slower at a 14-109. He'll take the first one. He sets the bar at a 14-077. Remember the track record set back in 2001 by Darren Pittman at a 12-276. Next two cars onto the racetrack. Out of Tuttle, Oklahoma, the Select Coatings, Outlaw Wings, Kaiser Wheels, Rod and Supply, High Side Racewear, number 2C of Wayne Johnson. And also out there out of Claiborne, Texas, the Taco Casa, KH Suspension, Pro One Safety and Race Products, Fox Drywall, Best Deal Services, number 01J of Jeb Sessoms. Lap number one for Wayne Johnson is third quick at a 14-526. 14-526 for Jeb Sessoms. It's a 15-217. 15-217. Wayne Johnson, second place finisher here back in 2017 with ASCS. He'll go better on lap number two at a 14-461. And for Jeb Sessoms on the second time by, it is better at a 15-203. He remains in the fourth position so far. So four of 19 drivers in Flight A qualifying have gone. Here is the next one. Out of Lebanon, Indiana, the True Timber Camo, nice Crete and Landis block. JRC Transportation, high performance lubricants number five. It's Spencer Baston, and also on the speedway out of St. Mary's, New South Wales, Australia. The Dirty Air, Ice Performance, Christians Family Foundation, Donna's Pool and Patio, Haas Hollage, number 25 of the Madman, Kerry Madsen. Lap one for Spencer Basin is second quick at a 14-134, 1-4-1-3-4. And for Kerry Madsen, he goes to third quick at a 14-253, 1-4-2-5-3. Lap two for Spencer Basin, he is not faster. 14-3-1-6, first one better at 14-134. Lap number two for Kerry Madsen is slower at a 14-374. He'll take the first one at a 14-253. On to the Speedway next, out of Apollo, Pennsylvania, the Mercedes Motorsports, Ducati of Pittsburgh, Mike Kleck Paving, Diesel Property Manage Management, Mav Motorsports, number 42 of Cy Lynch, and also on the Speedway, out of Visalia, California, the Commercial Edge, New Direction Transport, b &L Holdings, Elliott's Custom Trailers, Ridge Development, number uh, eight of Corey Eliason. Corey Eliason in car number eight. Lap number one for Cy Lynch is going to be fourth quick at a 14-298, 1-4-2-9-8. Tonight, just the second start of the year for Cy Lynch at a 410 sprint car. Lap number one for Corey Eliason is second quick at a 14088. 14088. Lap two for Cy Lynch is slower at a 14792. He stays back in fifth. And for Corey Elias, and we'll see if he can go any better. He does not. A 14282, but still second quick on lap one at a 14088 for Corey Eliason. From Angola, Indiana, here's the Sun Dollar Restoration, Ford Performance, Sage Fruit, Race Reading Foundation, Rudy and Management, number 26 of Zeb Wise. And from Calera, Oklahoma, the Oklahoma Truck Driving Academy, LS Construction and Roofing, High Plains Building Division, Victory Fuel, Donnie Ray Crawford, Legacy Foundation, number 88R of Ryder LaPlante. Ryder LaPlante in 88R. Lap number one for Zeb Wise is second, that is to the top, 14-025, 14-025 to the top for Zeb Wise. And lap number one for Ryder LaPlante is going to be 10th, or sorry, 9th quick, 14-907 for Zeb Wise. It's slower on lap two, 14-233, but he goes to the top on lap one, 14-025. Lap number two for Ryder LaPlante is going to be a little bit slower at a 14.988. First one was better at 14.907. He is ninth quick so far. 
From Myerstown, Pennsylvania, the M&M Painting and Construction, McGrewBid.com. Baps Paint, Livewire Customs, number 19. Here is Brett Marks. And also on the Speedway, out of Jacksonville, Oregon, it's the Boss Superstore, Shane DeWalt Trucking, Aztec USA, Carbon Works, Canopy Country, number 18T of Tanner Holmes. Tanner Holmes in car number 18T. Lap one for last week's winner here at Texas. It's going to be fifth quick for Brett Marks at a 14.244. And for Tanner Holmes on lap one, he's 10th quick at a 14.472. Brett Marks coming off a turn number four for lap number two. He goes up to second quick at a 14.054. And for Tanner Holmes on lap two, he slows down 14.491. His best lap was a 14.472, but Brent Marks jumps up to second quick at a 14.054. From Kokomo, Indiana, the Chalk 6 Torsion Bars, Town Line Variety, Indy Race Parts, High Performance Lubricants, number 9P, it's Parker Price Miller. And Parker's going to have to, okay, that yellow lights are going to have to come on there as the push truck a little bit slow to get the 44 car of Jason Howell up to snuff there. So Parker Price Miller had to lift to get uh, out of the gas and not run into those guys. So yellow lights come on. Jason Howell in the 44 car, the driver out of Fort Worth, Texas, sponsored by PAX Mobile Crusher, Flatline Manufacturing, Smith Titanium, All Import Auto Parts, and Gary Floyd Homes. Jason Howell was eighth with the Boss Sprint cars here back in 2021. And last year was a winner with the ASCS Elite Outlaw Non-Wing Series at Kennedale Speedway Park in 2023. Parker Price Miller takes the green flag that time by, and Parker comes in tonight sixth in the point standings. This is his Texas Motor Speedway Dirt Track debut. And lap number one for PPM is going to be 10th quick at a 14.470, 14.470. And for Jason Howell. On lap two, a 15-717. First lap was better at 15-172 for Parker Price Miller on lap number two. He goes to eighth quick at a 14-396. 14-396. Next two drivers rolling onto the racetrack, led out by Canton, Illinois driver. At a, in the NOS Energy Drink Zip Bonds. Elliot's, or sorry, yeah, the Elliott's Custom Trailers, TK Concrete, Logan Contractor Supply, number 55 of Chris Windham. And also on the speedway from Houghton, Louisiana, the Berkham Contracting, Griffith Truck and Equipment, Buddy Lee's Transmission, Performance Powder Coat, number six of Cody Adams. Cody Adams in car number six. Lap number one for Chris Windham is eighth quick at a 14-378, 14-378. 3, and for Cody Adams on lap number one, he's going to be 13th quick at a 14-733, 14-733. Chris Windham off of turn number four to the line. He's going to slow down on lap two at a 14.564. And for Cody Adams on lap number two, he slows down as well at a 14.921. Windham eighth, Adams 13th. From Higginsville, Missouri, the Andy's Frozen Custard, Casey's FBP Mountain Dew Overdrive, Impact Signs, Ditzfeld Transfer number 21. It's Blackjack Brian Brown. And also on the speedway, the current points leader with Kubota Highland Racing. Out of Indianapolis, Indiana, the NOS Energy Drink, Elliott's Custom Trailers and Cars number 7BC of Sunshine, Tyler Courtney. Tyler Courtney in the 7BC. Lap one for Brian Brown will be sixth quick at a 14-181, 14-181. And for Tyler Courtney, he is seventh quick at a 14-238. Brian Brown ran with the War of Outlaws here in 2003, finished 16th in that main event. Lap two is going to be second quick at a 14-052. And for Tyler Courtney, he goes up to second quick at a 14-039, 14-039. That is now six drivers in the 14.0 second bracket. Very close at the top of the speed charts. Final driver in Group A. Rolling onto the racetrack now out of St. Helena, California. The Rico Abreu Kerbaga Genian Racing, Whiskey Myers, Messiah Valley Transportation, El Bandito Yankee Tequila Hunt Family, number 24. Here is Rico Abreu. Rico Abreu in car number 24. Abreu for lap number one is going to be seventh quick at a 14-1-2-1, 1-4-1-2-1. One, one, 
Rico in his Texas Motor Speedway debut at the dirt track. He is seventh in points right now with Kubota Highland Racing. He got a win with the Outlaws at 81 Speedway just a few weeks ago. And lap number two, he's going to slow down on 14.223. First lap was better at 14.121. So Zeb Wise, fastest overall in flight A at a 14.025 in car number 26. So now we go right into flight B. First car on the racetrack is Brenham Crouch, the driver to Lubbock, Texas. The High Plains Building Division, Carbon Safety Technologies, Lubbock record, five nights truck accessories number one. And also on the racetrack, the five-time World of Outlaws champion out of Grass Valley, California, the Casey Kane Raceman, Mike Curb, Napa Auto Parts, Brumos Collection, Maximum Race Sales number 49 of Brad Sweet. Lap one for Brenham Crouch is going to be a 14-274, 1-4-274. For Brad Sweet on lap number one, a 13-735. Brad Sweet three-tenths faster than the rest of the field, 13-735 for Brad Sweet. Lap number two for Brenham Crouch slows down and for Brad Sweet on lap number two. He slows down by just barely a 13-828. Brad Sweet, 13.735, the only driver into the 13 second bracket here tonight. Next onto the racetrack, out of Sunnyvale, Texas, the High Breeder Foundation Service, TrueNorth.bet, CigarPort.ca, High Performance Lubricants 15H of Sam Hafer Teeth Jr. And behind him, out of Liberty Hill, Texas, the Baxter Builders, Dirtco Media House, K1 Race Gear, Smith Titanium Factory, Kane Shocks, number 25B of Blaine Baxter. Blaine Baxter in the 25B. Lap one for Haferteep is going to be third quickest so far at a 14.355 and for Blaine Baxter a 14.984. Haferteep a winner of four ASCS national touring events here at Texas Motor Streetway's dirt track. Lap number two is going to be slower for Haferteep at a 14.479 and for Blaine Baxter it's a 14.861. He's better on lap two but still fourth quick so far. Next on to the racetrack out of Sepulpa, Oklahoma, the Aces of Sim Sports, Smiley's Race Products, Glenn Styers Racing, CSR Garage, Premier Machine number 52, it's Blake Hahn. And also on the Speedway out of Indianapolis, Indiana, the Encore Builders, Shop House Racing number 17 of Zach Hampton. Zach Hampton in the 17. So Blake Hahn making his way through turns three and four right now, coming across the line for lap number one. It's going to be fourth quick for him at a 14.382. And for Zach Hampton, he's going to be sixth quick at a 14.873. And Hahn's got a problem. Blake Hahn off the pace on the backstretch, pulls into the infield. So problems for Blake Hahn as Hampton will come through turns three and four to lap number two. And it will be better at a fifth quick at a 14.796. 14.796 for Zach Hampton. Next two cars rolling onto the racetrack now. First one out of Liberal, Kansas, the Bybee Electric Trucks Plus, Mel Hamilton Racing, Donut Racing Engines, Camping Chaos number 36 of Jason Martin, and also on the speedway of Elk Grove, California, the Flow Racing, Finley Farms, HendrickCars.com, Falcons Brothers Trucking, Glenn Styers Racing, JBI Group number 57 of Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson in car number 57. Jason Martin, the defending ASCS National Tour Champion. On lap number one for him, it'll be Fourth quick at a 14.366, and for Kyle Larson, he will be sixth quick at a 14.397. Lap number two for Jason Martin will be slower at a 14.522, and for Kyle Larson on lap number two, he's better. How about second quick at a 14.194? Second quick for Kyle Larson, 14.194. Jason Martin, the 36, was fifth quick in those in that pairing. Next onto the racetrack out of El Paso, Texas, the Taco Casa, Mesilla Valley Transportation, Berkham Contracting, Scott Baylor Racing Engines, number J2 of John Carney. And also on the racetrack from Crandall, Texas, the Precision Repro Graphics, Irrational Metalworks, Smiley's Race Products, Classic Starter and Alternator, number four of Austin Mundy. Austin Mundy in car number four. Lap number one for Carney will be seventh quick, 14784. And for Mundy, he will be the seventh quick now at a 14415. Both of these drivers partaking in last week's race here at the Texas Motor Speedway dirt track. Mundy ended up in the seventh position in that feature event. 
Lap number two will slow down for both of them. They're seventh and eighth, respectively. A 14.415 for Mundy and a 14.784 for Carney. And Mundy missed the exit to the racetrack right there and he's going to make a little whoa that was almost a close call right there as Mundy tried to back her down and make it between that gap he'll just drive through victory lane and make his way towards the tunnel from Minden, Nevada here's the Smith Titanium Factory Kane Maximal Racewell Messina Valley Transportation Hall of Vodka Ron Gross Motorsports number 88 of Tanner Thorson and also on the Speedway, out of Dillsburg, Pennsylvania, the JNS Classics Valley Supply, CD Rigging Class 1 Transportation, number 39M, it's Anthony Macri. Lap 1 for Tanner Thorson is 6 quick at a 14.375, and for Anthony Macri on lap number 1, he goes up to 2nd quick at a 14.000, 14 flat for Anthony Macri. See what Thorson's got here on lap number two. It is slower, the 14.510. And for Anthony Macri, he will jump up to second. He's going to stay second quick, but he is now into the 13 second bracket, a 13.786, .8, about a half a tenth off the lap of Brad Sweet. Good lap there for Anthony Macri. From Alice Springs, Northern Territory, Australia, the Mobile One Toyota Racing Development, Roth Enterprises, HR Livestock, Transportation Number 83 at James McFadden. And also on the Speedway from Clovis, California, the Sander Engineering, Four Seas Construction, Entree Plumbing, Sincal, Driven to Save Lives, number 14 of Corey Day. Lap one for McFadden is going to be 10th quick at a 14.577. And for Corey Day on lap number one, he's fifth quick at a 14.283. McFadden making his first start of the season with Kubota High Limit Racing, got a fourth place finish with the Outlaws last weekend. He's now fourth quick at a 14.217. And for Corey Day on lap number two, he jumps back up to fifth at a 14.269. 14.269, James McFadden fourth, Corey Day fifth. Now here comes the most recent winner with Kubota High Limit Racing out of Hanover, Pennsylvania, the Pels Tire Service, RF Knox Company, the Auto Bard, Weinbrenner Motors Service, Lawrence's Body Shop, number 1A of Jacob Allen. And joining him out of Mitchell, Indiana, the Mahindra Tractors, Dorset Automotive, Ford Performance, Dia Edge, Hall Brothers Trucking, number 5B of Chase Briscoe. Chase Briscoe in the 5B. Lap one for Jacob Allen, third quick at a 13.859, the third driver into the 13 second bracket. And for Chase Briscoe on lap one, he is 16th quick at a 14.937, 14.937. Lap number two for Jacob Allen is better. It's a 13.840, still third quick for Allen. And for Chase Briscoe on lap number two, he's better. He's up to 13th quick at a 14.618, 14.618, 13th quick for Chase Briscoe. Looks like two more drivers set to qualify, and that'll wrap things up here in Capital Custom Trailer qualifying for the 37 Kubota High Limit Racing Sprint Cars that we have on the property here tonight. From Sykeston, Missouri, here's the Inland Rigging Woodland Auto Display, Marshak Cattle Company, Shurkin LLC, MP Environmental, number 73, it's 100% Hunter, Hunter Schurenberg. And also on the Speedway from Elam Claw, Washington, the Casey Kane Race with Mike Kerr, Bruno's Collection, Factory Kane Shocks, Kane Screen Print number 9, it's Casey Kane. Casey Kane in car number 9 celebrating a birthday this week, now 45 years old, as Hunter Schurenberg comes across the line for 13th quick at a 14-542. For Casey Kane, he's fourth quick at a 14-0-1-2. Good lap there for Kane, 14-0-1-2. Lap number two for Hunter Schoenberg is a 14-6-57. He'll take the first one, he's 14th quick. And for Casey Kane, he's slower on lap number two, 14-3-5-0. Still fourth quick on lap number one. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's all we've got here for Capital Custom Trailer Qualifying. How about it for your quick timer here tonight? Driving car number 49, it's Brad Sweet. Sweet's lap is a 13.735. He's followed by Anthony Macri there in session number two at a 13.786. Then Jacob Allen, 13.840. Those are the three drivers in the 13 second bracket. Then Casey Kane, fourth. Kyle Larson, fifth. James McFadden, sixth. Corey Day, seventh. Brenham Crouch, eighth. Sam Hayford, Jr., and Jason Martin, the top 10.
If you're looking for tickets to any upcoming high limit racing events and you're watching at home on Flow Racing right now, you could scan that ticket or that not that ticket, but you could scan that QR code to get some tickets right there as we get a good look at Tony Laporta making his way across the racetrack right now. But you scan that uh, QR code right there. It'll take you to highlimitracing.com and you could purchase your tickets for any upcoming race here right now. Let's take a quick break here on Flow Racing. When we come back, it is opening ceremonies time here from the dirt track at Tech. Texas Motor Speedway for the Uncle Chicken Sippin' Whiskey Stockyard Stampede presented by Whiskey Myers. Hi, this is Sunshine Tyler Courtney, and you're watching High Limit Racing on Flow Racing. comes to Magneto Ignition Performance, there's only one name that you can trust, and that's BR Motorsports Ignitioneering. Servicing the racing industry for over 30 years, our state-of-the-art Magneto Dyno Test Lab facility is equipped with the most technically advanced equipment available. And that's why crew chiefs like Paul Silva and Philip Dietz choose BR for all their ignition needs. To learn more, visit us at brpromag.com. Capital Custom Trailers and Coaches. We are the number one Renegade Toter Home dealer and the number one Intec and Bravo Sprint Car Trailer dealer. No one sells more Toter Homes and Sprint Car Trailers than we do. Check out our complete lineup at CapitalRenegade.com. If you're in the market for a Toter Home or a trailer, trust the people that are in the pits with you and that support the sport. best days of the year start here at Kubota Orange Days. It's the year's biggest selection of Kubota tractors, zero-turn mowers, and utility vehicles, including the number one selling compact tractor in the USA. Plus the year's best deals like 0% APR for 84 months or up to $3,300 off select compact tractors. Orange goes all day. Sales ending soon. Visit your local dealer today. Find your nearest dealer at KubotaOrangedays.com. And welcome back to the Texas Motor Speedway Dirt Track here in Fort Worth, Texas. We are moments away from opening ceremonies here for the Uncle Chicken Sippin' Whiskey Stockyard Stampede presented by Whiskey Myers. Getting a few things in order and they'll be underway with opening ceremonies in just a few moments. Disco Lighting is proud to be an official partner of High Limit Racing. As the world's leader in sports lighting, Musco's advanced solutions are featured everywhere, from local tracks to the biggest NASCAR and Formula One circuits around the globe. On behalf of the entire Musco team, we hope you enjoy tonight's event. Racing Electronics is the number one company in race communications and the official race communications provider for High Limit. Racing Electronics has over 30 years of experience and serves every major form of auto racing. And the exclusive Racing Electronics Race Receiver Pro is the micro receiver of choice for the top High Limit drivers. Learn more by calling RE today at 800-272-7111 or visit them at racingelectronics.com. Jake's Golf Carts, America's home for custom carts, has been supporting dirt track racing for over 25 years and is proud to be a sponsor of High Limit Racing. Jake's Golf Carts offer racing discounts to all race teams and race fans with nationwide shipping available. Give Jake's Golf Carts a call at 717-899-6699 and check them out online at www.jakesgolfcarts.com. Make sure you tell them High Limit Racing sent you for a special racing discount.
Texas-based band Whiskey Myers seamlessly fuses gritty blues, rock, and Americana, creating an authentic and original sound. From humble beginnings playing at local honky tonks to headlining major festivals and topping the charts, Whiskey Myers' journey is a testament to the enduring spirit of Southern music. While one driver will visit Whiskey Myers' Victory Lane tonight, you should visit their website for tour dates, tickets, and merchandise at whiskeymyers.com. K1 Race Gear is proud to be the official safety gear provider of High Limit Racing. More top-level drivers across all forms of motorsport trust K1 Race Gear with their safety product needs. Whether it's premium custom suits, gloves, or shoes, K1 Race Gear has you covered. Find out more at www.k1racegear.com and follow us along at K1 Race Gear on all social media platforms. K1 Race Gear, the racer's brand of safety gear and apparel. Well, it looks like we are ready for opening ceremonies here at the dirt track at Texas Motor Speedway. So for that, we'll send it downstairs to Tony Laporta. Texas Motor Speedway, how are we feeling tonight? <laughs> Kubota High Limit Racing is ready to kick off the Uncle Chicken Sippin' Whiskey Stockyard Stampede presented by Whiskey Myers. And that will begin with opening ceremonies. At this time, we ask if you're able to please rise and remove your caps as we welcome from the Texas Alliance of Raceway Ministries, Chaplain Mike Evans to lead us in tonight's invocation. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day here in No Limits, Texas at this great American Speedway. We thank you for the freedom to gather together and to pray openly in your name. We thank you for our men and women in uniform around the world who put themselves in harm's way that we might enjoy these freedoms. We ask you to protect them and to give them peace. Lord, we ask for safety for everyone here this evening, the drivers, the crews, the track personnel, and the fans. We thank you most of all, Lord, for your unconditional love and your forgiveness where we fall short. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Fans, at this time, we ask that you please remain standing as we prepare to honor America with the singing of tonight's national anthem. At this time, please give a warm Texas welcome to Nashville recording artist Stephen Paul for tonight's national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light was so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gay proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangle banner head way or the land of the free and the home of the brave. Yeah! Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time. How about it for Stephen Paul? So Texas Motor Speedway, I ask you one more time. How are we feeling tonight? Are you ready for some Kubota high limit racing action? Well, ladies and gentlemen, with that, it's Texas on a sat on a Friday night. It's the Uncle Chicken Sippin' Whiskey Stockyard Stampede presented by Whiskey Myers here at the Texas Motor Speedway. And coming up next, it is Kubota High Limit Racing.
Heat race number one about to make their way onto the racetrack for racing action here at the Texas Motor Speedway dirt track at the Uncle Chicken Sippin' Whiskey Stockyard Stampede presented by Whiskey Myers. Heat race number one tonight is brought to you by the guys at TJ Forge. TJ Forged Wheels was started by Taylor TJ Weld to build the best, no compromises, forged wheels for high-performance motorsports. We only build forged aluminum wheels using proprietary tooling and exclusive manufacturing processes that clearly elevate our wheels above the competition. Product quality, product safety, and exceptional customer service is what we do. We lead where others follow. Don't settle for close enough. TJ Forged. All right, let's take a look at the lineup for Kubota High Limit Racing Heat Race Number One, brought to you by TJ Forged. On the front row, the driver out of Higginsville, Missouri, the Andy's Frozen Custard, Casey's FVP Mountain Dew Overdrive Impact Signs, Ditsville Transfer Number Twenty One. It's Blackjack Brian Brown, and outside of him, starting from the second position. Out of Monrovia, Indiana, the Avanti Windows and Doors, Big Spring Car Wash, Water Treatment by Design, RKL Paving number 13, it's Justin Peck. Row number two on the inside, driving car number 24, the driver to St. Helena, California, the Rico Abreu, Kerbega, Janie and Racing, Messina, Whiskey Myers, Messina Valley Transportation, El Bandito, Yankee Tequila, Hunt Family, entry of Rico Abreu. And outside of him, your fast qualifier from Flight A, out of Angola, Indiana, that's the Sun Dollar Restoration, Ford Performance, Sage Fruit, Race Reading Foundation, Rudy Management number 26, of Zeph Wise. Row three on the inside out of St. Mary's, New South Wales, Australia, the Dirty Air, Ike's Performance Parts, Christensen Family Foundation, Donna's Pool and Patio, Haas Hollers, number 25, the Madman, Kerry Matson. And outside of him from Canton, Illinois, the NOS Energy Drink, Zip Bonds, TK, or TK Concrete, Longa Contractor Supply, Elliott's Custom Trailers, number 55, it's Chris Windham. Row four on the inside, your seventh starter. Out of Olive Branch, Mississippi, the NOS Energy Drink, West Tennessee Expediting, Hunt Brothers Pizza, Maximal Race Oils, Frozen Farmer, Easy Go. Number 17, Junior, Ricky Stenhouse, Jr. And outside of him, out of Jacksonville, Oregon, the Boss Superstore, Shane DeWalt Trucking, Aztec USA, Carbon Works, Canopy Country, number 18T, it's Tanner Holmes. And your final row in TJ Forge Heat Race number one. On the inside of row number five, out of Calera, Oklahoma, the Oklahoma Truck Driving Academy, LS Construction and Roofing, High Plains Building Division, Victory Fuel, Donnie Ray Crawford, Legacy Foundation, number 88R, it's Reiner LaPlante. And your final starter in this one, out of Claiborne, Texas, the Taco Casa, KH Suspension, Pro One Safety and Race Products, Fox Drywall, Best Deal Services, number 01J, it's Jeb Sessoms. Well, ladies and gentlemen, at the top of the show, we were talking about how many driver is the DJ of the night for every single Kubota High Limit Racing event in 2024. Tonight, it is Brad Sweet, and he really likes some country music. So here is the first song from Brad Sweet's High Roller Playlist. He never hung his hat up at Kitty's Place. I should have been a cowboy. I should have... Tony, I know you like that song. Hey, Toby Keith, RIP, should have been a cowboy. That's what I say every single time I can't get my microphone to work. I always go, you know what? I should have been a cowboy. Also, Brody Hayward just corrected me. It is actually Saturday night in Texas. I said it's Friday night, Chase, but it is Saturday night, and we're ready to go with Kubota High Limit Racing. Yeah, I was going to correct you too, Tony, but I, I was just going to let you have your moment there and, and pretend like it was Friday, but that's fine, man. As we are getting cars all fired up, they're getting in their proper starting position, starting things off with a little Should Have Been a Cowboy by Toby Keith there on Brad Sweet's High Roller Playlist. Each one of the high rollers will have a playlist for two races this year, so we posted a graphic to the High Limit Racing social media page that showed a lot of songs on there. We aren't able to play all of them in one night, so each driver will get two nights to be the DJ this year. These heat races will be eight laps in distance. The top five, I want to repeat this, the top five finishers at the end of this eight lap heat race will go straight to the A main. Meanwhile, the heat race winner and the fastest qualifier to transfer will be going to tonight's dash. So the winner and the fastest qualifier from earlier on that transfers inside the top five will go to the dash. Right now, the fastest qualifier is the 26 of Zeb Wise. Under the Kubota High Limit Racing rulebook, the fastest qualifier in each heat race will be inverted to the fourth starting position in the heat races. 
Lights go out. We're ready for some competitive action here at the Texas Motor Speedway Dirt Track with Kubota High Limit Racing. For the Uncle Chicken Sippin' Whiskey Stockyard Stampede, presented by Whiskey Myers. Slowly into turn number three. Here we go. Rolling into turn number one. Blackjack's going to jump out to the early lead. It's Brian Brown. Rico Abreu slides into the second spot, getting by Justin Peck off of turn number two. Peck back to third. Zeb Wise, your fast qualifier, running in fourth and in fifth. A good battle going on between Nas Energy Drink teammates. It's Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and Chris Window. Stenhouse has the spot right now. Earlier on today, qualified in the 31st position for the NASCAR Cup race tomorrow. And last weekend, Stenhouse, two second place finishes at US, or with the USCS series out there in North Carolina. Everybody getting pretty spread out here. The track's still relatively fast, waiting for it to slick up and, and widen out. As Brian Brown shows the way down the front straightaway, that time by three laps in and five to go for Blackjack. Chris Windham reeling in the 17 junior, Ricky Stenhouse into turn number one. Chris Windham ran the top in turn one and tried to turn it down the hill on the exit of turn number two, not able to gain any ground on Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Chris Windham trying to find a way to catch up. As we come around this time, five in and three laps to go. Brian Brown might get to the tail end of the field at this pace right now. In that Andy's Frozen Custard FBP case, he's number 21. You can see Ryder the plan. He's on the same straightaway as the 88R. Two to go that time by for Brian Brown. Everybody relatively spread out. Looks like a hot lap session out there right now in TJ Ford's heat race number one. Here is the white flag for Brian Brown. Brownie down the back stretch. He'll head into turn number three, come off of turn number four. He's going to get the win at TJ Ford's heat race number one. It's Brian Brown. Second goes to Rico Abreu. Third to Justin Peck. Fourth will go to Zeb Wise. And fifth will go to Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Here are your results from TJ Ford's heat race number one. Brian Brown in car number 21 will get the win. He will go to the dash. Second, the 24 of Rico Abreu. Third to the 13 of Justin Peck. Fourth and also going to the dash, the 26 of Zeb Wise. And your final transfer driving car number 17 junior, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Chris Windham, Kerry Madsen, Tanner Holmes, the rest of the field. And it looks like Tony Laporte is going to talk to Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Final transfer in that one. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. pulling double duty this weekend with the NASCAR Cup Series racing across the way at the big track here at Texas Motor Speedway. Ricky, you do not get nearly as much time as I'm sure you would like driving this 410 NOS Energy Drink wing sprint car. So how good does it feel to come and lock into your first time back after a while away? It feels really good. We struggled in hot laps there, qualifying. I just felt really behind. My dad made some really good changes to our NOS Energy Drink 17. So it feels good. Get to get some more laps tonight. Um, starting seventh was tough but uh, glad we put it in and see the guys later. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. bringing up a great point. Chase started seventh, raced his way in. As you hit on it, they take the top five in tonight's A main event. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. will be racing a little bit later on tonight. He certainly will. Good run there from him to get by a couple cars and make it into the transfer spot as we take a look at heat race number two. Heat race number two, well, it's brought to you by the guys at DMI. DMI Racing Components are built with the precision of skilled machinists and the common sense of winning racers. Located in the heart of central Pennsylvania, you can find us every week participating in the sport we love. You race, we race, let's race together. DMI Racing Components. Well, looking at the lineup for DMI, heat race number one on the pole. He was the winner here last week with Power Eye out of Myerstown, Pennsylvania. The M&M Painting and Construction, thegroupbid.com. Baps Paint, Livewire Custom, number 19, it's Brent Marks. And outside of him, from Visalia, California, the Commercial Edge, New Direction Transport, P&L Holdings, Elliott's Custom Trailers, number eight of Corey Eliason. Row two on the inside out of Lebanon, Indiana, the True Timber Camo, Nice Green and Landis Block, JRC Transportation, High Performance Lubricants, number five of Spencer Baston. And outside of him, the current points leader with Kubota High Limit Racing. Out of 
Indianapolis, Indiana. The NOS Energy Drink, Elliott's Custom Trailers and Carts, number 7 BC of Sunshine, Tyler Courtney. Row three on the inside, your fifth starter out of Apollo, Pennsylvania. The Mercedes Motorsports, Ducati of Pittsburgh. Mike Kleck Paving, Diesel Property Management, Mav Motorsports, number 42. It's Cy Lynch. And outside of him, starting from sixth. Out of Kokomo, Indiana, the Chalk Sticks Torsion Bars, Townline Variety. Indy Race Parts, High Performance Lubricants, number 9P. The law firm, Parker Price Miller. Row four, out of Tuttle, Oklahoma, the Select Coatings, Rod and Supply. Kaiser Wheels, Outlaw Wings, High Side Racewear, number 2C of Wayne Johnson. And outside of him from Houghton, Louisiana, that is the Berkham Contracting, Griffith Truck and Equipment, Buddy Lease Transmission, Performance powder, powder Coat number 6 of Cody Adams, and your final starter from Fort Worth, Texas, the PAX Mobile Crusher, Flatline Manufacturing, Smith Titanium, All Import Auto Parts, Gary Floyd Holmes, number 44 of Jason Howell. How about another song from Brad Sweet's High Roller Playlist? She's friendly and fun loving most of the time. But don't ask her on a straight to keep the night. You'll start thinking about him, and she's ready to fight. Here we go to the green flag in DMI heat race number two. Nice even start up front. Corey Eliason fighting around the outside to get by Brett Marks, but Marks will have the lead down the back straightaway. Eliason, new crew chief on that car since the last time we saw him with Kubota High Limit Racing. As he runs second right now in the Ridge and Sun Racing number eight. Behind him, here comes Spencer Gase to try to close in on the rear bumper of that car to turn number one. Tyler Courtney running in the fifth position. He is the fastest qualifier in this heat race, so if he can make it inside the top five, he will be in the dash along with Marks if he can hang on for the win. Tyler Courtney slips off the corner a little bit. Turn number four, Parker Price Miller trying to close in down the front straightaway. An important battle there for Courtney and PPM. One is not in the feature, and the other one can either miss the feature and the dash, that being Sunshine. Tyler Courtney came in the night with an 18-point lead over Brad Sweet at the top of the Kubota High Limit Racing point standings. Looks like a battle for second potentially shaping up here as Spencer Baston is looking to track down the number eight of Corey Eliason. Baston, one of just a handful of drivers that's been in the top ten for every Kubota High Limit Racing event so far in 2024. This time by five, down and three to go for Brett Marks. The winner here last week with Power Eye. He's going to put a lap down on the six of Cody Adams, who pulls that car into the infield on the back straightaway. Two to go for Marks, and it looks like no real battle shaping up here as Eliason's gotten everything back together and has pulled away a little bit now from the five of Spencer Baston. Corey Eliason running quite a bit during the downtime for Kubota High Limit Racing. Won a race at the Baps Motor Speedway. Had a couple of good runs at Williams Grove as well. Meanwhile, Baston only ran one time. Finished 12th in the main event at Williams Grove Speedway in Pennsylvania. Here's the checkered flag this time by for Brett Marks. He gets the win in DMI Heat Race number two. Corey Eliason second, Spencer Baston third, Cy Lynch fourth, and Tyler Courtney finishes up in fifth. Here's your unofficial results from DMI Heat Race number two. Going to the dash with the victory, driving car number 19, it's Brent Marks, finishing second and going to the feature, the eight of Corey Eliason. Finishing third in car number five, it's Spencer Baston, fourth in the 42 of Cy Lynch. And going to the dash is the fastest qualifier in the 7 BC of Tyler Courtney, with Parker Price Miller, Wayne Johnson, Jason Howell, and Cody Adams rounding out the field. Those guys will head off to the B main, but this guy's going to the feature. It's Spencer Basin, and he's talking to Tony Laporta. Spencer Basin, it's been a while since we saw you, but this number five does not seem to be missing a beat, a top 10 so far in every Kubota high limit racing event so far. How was the time off from race? And I heard you were even trying to schedule a turkey hunt. You went to a Morgan Wallen concert. What was the time away from the track like for you guys? Yeah, the time, uh, time off was really, really good. I think for everybody involved in our team, give the guys a good chance to get uh, these Truth Timber 5 cars prepped and ready to go, looking good like they do with the midnight camo pattern on them. I enjoyed my time at home, uh, but man, we've been chomping at the bit. At least I've been chomping at the bit, ready to get back racing, ready to uh, put on shows in front of great crowds every night, and uh, happy to be here in Texas. Happy to be here in Texas because Spencer Baston is going to be racing in the A-Main event a little bit later on tonight, Chase. He's going to he's going to be rocking some of that true timber gear if him and Nathan Isaacson can ever get their turkey hunt scheduled. Uh, if you were a turkey around Spencer Baston, I'd look out. 
He's got, Spencer Basin has some of the best merchandise in sprint car racing because of that True Timber Camo sponsorship. As you take a look at the Heat Race number three lineup in just a moment after we talk about the presenting sponsor, which is BR Motorsports. Comes to buying sprint car parts, there is only one place to shop, and that is BR Motorsports. With over 250,000 parts in stock, BR Motorsports only sells the best parts by the best manufacturers, like King Racing Products, MSD Ignition, Kaiser Wheels, and XXX Chassis. To find out more, visit brmotorsports.com, and don't forget to request a free copy of the new 300-page BR Super Parts catalog. BR Motorsports, the leaders in sprint car technology. Here we go for heat race number three. It's Jacob Allen on the pole, the driver out of Hanover, Pennsylvania, the Pell's Tire Service, RF Knox Company, the Auto Barn entry outside of him at about Grove, California. It's the Flow Racing Finley Farms, HendrickCars.com, number 57 of Kyle Larson. Row two on the inside out of Clovis, California, the Sander Engineering, Four Seas Construction, Entree Plumbing, number 14 of Corey Day. And outside of him, the five-time Outlaw Champion and quick-time qualifier tonight out of Grass Valley, California, the Casey Kane Racer with Mike Curb, Napa Auto Parts, number 49 of Brad Sweet. Row three, the 15H, Sam Haver T. Jr. out of Sunnyvale, Texas, and outside of him, the 88 of Tanner Thorson from Minden, Nevada. Row four out of Crandall, Texas, it's the four of Austin Mundy, and outside of him, the 5B out of Mitchell, Indiana, Chase Briscoe. And your final starter in this one out of Mooresville, Indiana, 17 of Zach Hampton rounding out the field. Brad Sweet's in this race. He is tonight. DJ, let's listen to the song he chose for this heat race. You're never An all-time classic as we go to the green in BR Motorsports heat race number three. Jacob Allen with the lead early on in this one. He's the most recent winner with Kubota High Limit Racing. Got that done six weeks ago at the Golden Isle Speedway in Georgia. Kyle Larson running in second. Here's a battle for the sixth position. On the bottom is Chase Briscoe trying to find a way by the 17 of Zach Hampton. Hampton's got the spot right now in the shop house racing 17. Hampton shuts the door on Briscoe into turn number one and pulls away from the 5B. And now Briscoe gets passed around the outside by Sam Hayford Team Jr. for seventh. Racing for third down the front straight lane. Corey Day trying to find a way by the 49 of Brad Sweet to turn number one. Sweet runs the middle right there. Sweet earlier on, the fastest driver overall in qualifying with a blistering 13 7 35. Who's blistering right now, though, is that car right there. The 1A of Jacob Allen. A full straightaway lead over the 57 of Kyle Larson right now. Jacob Allen did the most racing out of anybody during the break for Kubota Highland Racing. Ran seven races, all of them with the World of Outlaws, and he stayed sharp in that car, and it is showing right now. Larson back in second, third spot sweet, fourth spot is Corey Day, and fifth is Thorson. Outside looking in is Zach Hampton, then Sam Haberteen Jr. and Chase Briscoe. Jacob Allen, an absolutely torrent pace set up right now by the Shark Racing number 1A. Last time by about a tenth faster was the lap time set by Allen over Kyle Larson. White flag coming out for the 1A. Down the back stretch, got one car to maybe deal with here in the final corner. It is Chase Briscoe as Jacob Allen comes off in turn number four. He will win BR Motorsports heat race number three. Oh, we got one upside down in turn one. Zach Hampton upside down in turn number one. Red flag comes out as we've got one that went for a tumble down in the first corner. That is the driver out of Indianapolis, Indiana, Zach Hampton. Hampton driving that Shop House Racing Encore Builders number 17 car here tonight. That car later on uh, in the month of April will be piloted by Vout Hoffmans. And so I'm not sure where Vout is here tonight, the driver out of Boxmere, Netherlands. But they put Hampton in the car to keep that thing rolling around the track here. And he gets upside down in a big way in turn number one. And ladies and gentlemen, Zach Hampton has climbed from the car and is walking away under his own power. MedStar safety team on the scene along with Kubota High Limit Racing officials. Hampton's got the helmet off. We got a replay coming up here. If you're watching at home on Flow Racing, we'll see what happened here. He was battling for, I believe, fifth position. Oh, and it looks like the axle snapped potentially on the 17. He went into turn number one, and you could tell that something in the rear end went awry. 
and sent Hampton for a big ride right there. We've seen that a couple times. We actually had that happen to Chris Windham on the practice night at Golden Isles Speedway back in February. He lost an axle and went for a big ride. It looked like that may have been the case for the 17 of Zach Hampton. And you could tell from here that all four corners of that car, as far as the frame goes, are laying on the racetrack as we'll take a look at slow-mo here. Something just snapped right there getting into the corner, and that has got to be a helpless feeling if you are Zach Hampton. Sam Haferteep actually getting a piece of that. He's got some wing damage on the 15H. So Hampton, good to see him climb out of that car. And Tony, it looks like you are on the scene. What's up? Yeah, down here is Zach Hampton. First of all, are you okay? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm good. It was, I definitely had some air time. That was a little bit of a scary one, but luckily I landed softly for the most part. We walked right up here to the car. I haven't even got a chance to look at it. There's, there's a lot to look at. Any idea from your seat what happened? Yeah, I don't know. It felt like the drive shaft or something. I mean, it, something in the rear broke. I couldn't tell if the left rear, like the axle snapped or the drive shaft, but I mean, it's got the snout of the rear ripped completely off. So it kind of felt like that and then just kind of backed in and cat catapulted me from there. All right, Zach, glad to hear you're okay. Uh, tough luck, man. Hate to see it. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks. Zach Hampton walking away from this one. Chase, that's the best news of all. It certainly is, and that's a tough deal there is Hampton. Uh, one of the most exciting drivers, in my opinion, when it comes to sprint car racing. That guy, he, he's not afraid of anything, and uh, it was cool to see him get a ride like this, and unfortunately, it's going to come to a pretty tough ending. He was saying if things went well here tonight at Texas Motor Speedway, he might make the trip tomorrow to RPM Speedway in Crandall, Texas, but Tony, I don't think that's going to be the case after this. Yeah, I didn't exactly want to ask him about that, but I will say this, something I was hoping to talk to Zach Hampton about, and something that I think people should still really go home and check out if, if you if you're a fan of sprint car racing, if you know about Zach, if you don't, Justin Fiedler and DirtTracker.com have done a really cool series with Zach where he walks you through literally step by step building a sprint car back home uh, that he's going to race this year. So um, if you if you don't know Zach, if you do, it doesn't really matter. Go home, look him up. They're on YouTube. Justin Fiedler at DirtTracker.com produces those. And Zach has just done an incredible job. Um, unfortunately, this sprint car in front of us will have quite an extensive rebuild to go through, unfortunately. 10-4 on that, Tony. Thank you for that information. I just got a text in here from Tom Hahn, who I believe is Blake Hahn's dad. He said they had a fuel line that came loose in qualifying, and that's why we saw Blake Hahn off the pace on it during his qualifying run. He'll be out here in this next heat race. And this next heat race uh, is brought to you by the guys at FK Rodden. So let's hear from them before we get into the lineup. Winter's Performance has been manufacturing speed parts for the racing industry for over 65 years. Many of the winningest sprint cars in history are equipped with Winter's Quick Change Rears and Driveline Components. Visit Winter'sPerformance.com today. Well, unfortunately, uh, our uh, schedule that we put out today for Kubota High Limit Racing had FK Roddens as the Heat Race Number 4 sponsor. FK Roddens is actually the Dash sponsor. Heat Race Number 4 is brought to you by Winter's Performance, as you heard there. Let's take a look at the lineup for this fourth Heat Race, the final Heat Race of the night. Once again, top five drivers transferring to the feature event. On the pole of Heat Race Number 4, he's out of Elam Claw, Washington, just celebrated a birthday this week. It's the Casey Kane race with Mike Kerr, Brumos Collection, Factory Kane Shocks, Kane Screen Print number nine, it's Casey Kane. And outside of Casey, out of Alice Springs, Northern Territory, Australia, the Mobile One Toyota Racing Development, Roth Enterprises, HR Livestock Transportation number 83 of James McFadden. Row number two on the inside out of Lubbock, Texas. It's the High Plains Building Division, Carbon Safety Technologies, Lubbock Rector, Five Nights Truck Accessories, ShopTruckParts.com, number one of Brenham Crouch. And outside of him, out of Dillsburg, Pennsylvania, it's the JNS Classics Valley Supply c and &E Rigging, Class 1 Transportation number 39M of Anthony Macri. Row 3 on the inside, he's the defending ASCS National Champion out of Liberal, Kansas. The Bybee Electric Trucks Plus, Mel Hamilton Racing, Donaut Racing Engines, Camping Chaos number 36 of Jason Martin. And outside of him, out of Sepulpa, Oklahoma, starting from the sixth position, he drives the Aces Up Sim Sports Smiley's Race Products, Glenn Steyer's Racing CSR Garage Premier Machine number 52 of Blake Hahn. 
Fourth row inside, your seventh starter, the driver out of Sykeston, Missouri, the Inland Rigging, Woodland Auto Display, Marchant Cattle Company, Shurcan LLC, MP Environmental. Number 73, it's 100% Hunter Schoenberg. And outside of him from El Paso, Texas, the Taco Casa, Mesilla Valley Transportation, Berkham Contracting, Scott Baylor Racing Engines, number J2 of John Carney II. And your final starter for this final heat race. Driving car number 25B out of Liberty Hill, Texas, the Baxter Builders, Dirtco Media House, K1 Race Gear, Smith Titanium, Factory Cane Shocks entry of Blaine Baxter. Those are the drivers for heat race number four, brought to you by Winter's Performance. And Tony, you, uh, I've known Blaine Baxter, who's starting ninth in this heat race for a very long time. He's from California, moved out here to Texas a few years ago to chase the dream of sprint car racing. Uh, but man, you learned today that he had a wild moment during his younger days as a race car driver. Yeah, no kidding. Um, one of the best parts about what I get to do with Kubota High Limit Racing Chase is walk around in the pit area. And I tell, I straight up told the drivers today, I said, hey, Chase Rodman gets the, the business, the hard stuff out of the way, the stats, the sponsors. I get the fun stuff and I get to learn about what the drivers do during the break and how they spend their time. But man, what I learned about Blaine Baxter was not fun. And you already knew it. I believe it's his right arm um, was all but completely ripped off in an accident when he was much younger racing uh, back home where he's from originally in California. And through some incredible work by doctors and surgeons, they got that thing repaired. They had to graft skin off his lower leg, take muscle off of his back, actually. But man, Blaine Baxter going through a crazy injury like that, nearly losing his right arm completely from like the middle of his forearm down. And that did not keep him from, from getting back behind the wheel, jumping up to these four 10 wing sprint cars. Huge fan of Blaine Baxter after learning all that today. Yeah, his dad, his dad uh, Dustin Baxter, great guy as well. Uh, Blaine Baxter, for those of you here in the grandstands, he is in that number 25B car. We'll be starting ninth here in this heat race coming up. We have got the 17 car, Zach Hampton, hooked up to the tow truck, and he is getting that car taken back to the pit area. So we got another song coming out here from Brad Sweet's High Roller Playlist, and I'm sure a lot of you know this one. There's always room. I may have accidentally double tapped the button there, but we could have finished it together here in the grandstands. The neon moon. I'm not the singer. I know, Tony, you are the singer, but that was pretty bad for me. Chase, that is my Chili Bowl karaoke song at Lenny's, baby. I know Brad Sweet loves his 90s country. Neon moon is what you will catch me singing about three times a night at Lenny's at Chili Bowl. And I don't care if people are sick of it. I love it. Well, I, I wish we could have heard Brooks and Dunn say Neon Moon there, but I accidentally hit my button two times there and uh, kind of ruined it. But we've got other chances to listen to some more Brad and Sweet music here coming up later on in the dash, the B-Main, as well as the feature. Cars are rolling right now here for this final heat race of the night. It's the heat race brought to you by the guys at Winter's Performance as the cars get fired off now. There's James McFadden on your screen if you're watching Home on Flow. If you're here in the grandstands, that 83 car, the driver all the way from Australia. He is a full-time driver with the high or the Kubota High Limit Racing Series. And unfortunately for McFadden, he missed the first four races of the season with Kubota High Limit Racing due to visa issues. Could not get over here to the States in time for the racing. Has finally made it over here, and this is his first race of the season. He is full-time there in the Dennis, Ro Dennis and Teresa Roth own number 83 car. There's McFadden right there on your screen. If you're watching at home, coming off of turn number four right now there, Tony. Chase, I got a chance to talk to James in the pit area before we got going tonight. And, man, I, I'll tell you this. There's a lot to learn about visa documentation uh, when coming into the U.S. for really any reason. And James McFadden explained a lot of it in depth. And, and we don't have the time to get into it, nor really the desire. But, man, what an arduous process. Uh, James, his partner Zoe, their son Maverick, all have to go through to come over here to the U.S. US uh, to race that Roth Enterprises number 83. He's sick over the fact he wasn't here for the first four races. He's a fan favorite. People love James. And man, what a crazy difficult process that he has to go through to come over here and race. It's unbelievable. Tony, I couldn't imagine all the paperwork, especially having to read it in that Australian language, man. That would just be tough. 
be a lot of work. Yeah, the accent, I think, in those uh, in those documents really gets to some of us, Jason. Yeah, absolutely. I, I cannot do it. But we are ready to go green next time by here in Winner's Performance Heat Race number four. Casey Kane on the front row next to James McFadden. Interesting story there. McFadden used to be the driver of that Casey Kane Racing number nine car. Brenham Crouch in row two next to the 39M of Anthony Macri. Row three, it's the 36 of Jason Martin, the 52 of Blake Hahn. And in row four, you got the 73 of Hunter Schoenberg and the J2 of John Carney the second. And your final starter, 25B Blaine Baxter. Top five finishers going to the feature, the winner and the fastest qualifier in this heat race, which is Anthony Macri. As long as he finishes top five, they will both go to the dash. Green lights come on and a tough start there for Kane. They were three wide for a moment. McFadden's going to get the best of the nine cars. They roll into turn number one. A little contact back in the field there as Jason Martin got hit from behind by Blake Kahn. Martin loses that transfer spot to Hunter Schoenberg as a little contact potentially off a of turn number four between Casey Kane and Anthony Macri. Macri's going to get passed on the inside by Brenham Crouch. Brenham Crouch was here at the Texas Motor Speedway dirt track last week with the Power Eye 410 Series. Finished ninth in that main event after battling for the lead early on. James McFadden trying to go one for one in the dash appearances in his 2024 Kubota High Limit Racing career. Casey Kane running back in second. Crouch is third. Macri trying to find a way by him. And in your final transfer spot is Hunter Schoenberg. Schoenberg found out two days ago that he was going to be racing that JFM Motorsports number 73 car. That car towed all the way out from Southern California to be here today in RPM tomorrow and then at the Red Dirt Raceway in Meeker, Oklahoma on Tuesday. And then they're heading back to California. Close call a lap ago for the J2 of John Carney. Actually drugged the back bumper off the wall. You can see where he scrubbed the, the mud off the wall off of turn number four. Two to go signal this time for James McFadden. McFadden was quick right out of the gate. His first race in the States was with the Outlaws last week at the US 36 Raceway. Finished fourth in that feature. So. McFadden is definitely uh, feeling good here in this Roth Motorsports 83 as he comes to the white flag this time by. He's got a lap car up the road, a Blaine Baxter to deal with potentially. Casey Kane catching up here to James McFadden on the final lap. McFadden through the middle, Kane to the top. Might be a close finish here down the line as Blaine Baxter smoking at the line. It's going to be McFadden getting the win and going to the dash. Kane, Crouch, Macri, and Schurenberg, the top five. Here are your results in heat race number four. James McFadden by one car length will get the win, and he will go to the dash. Casey Kane finishes up in second. Brennan Crouch in third. Anthony Macri, the fastest qualifier to transfer. He will be in the dash as well in the 39M. And your final transfer, the 73 of Hunter Schoenberg. Jason Martin, Blake Hahn, John Carney, and Blaine Baxter will head to tonight's B main event. But one guy not going to the B main is the Texas local himself, Brennan Crouch, down on the front stretch with Tony Laporte. He's a Texan, ladies and gentlemen. Make some noise for one of your very own. Brenham Crouch is going to go racing a little bit later on tonight. Brenham, you were quick time here back on April 5th with Power Eye in this 410. You're looking really sporty right now. What do you like about racing here at the Texas Motor Speedway dirt track? Uh, you know, I grew up kind of watching races here, so it's cool to, to actually uh, get wheels on the racetrack and make some laps and do it around some pretty good race cars. So, uh, you know, Brad Austin and Rizzi have really uh, got me comfortable the last month or so and uh you know just hats off to them and i think we're we're slowly making speed so <clears throat> hopefully we can just keep building on uh on results and and laps and you know later a couple weeks down the road hopefully we can uh even tonight be uh, be up front that is Texas's very own Brenham Crouch. He's going to go racing a little bit later on tonight in the A main event for tonight's Uncle Chicken's Sippin' Whiskey Stockyard Stampede presented by Whiskey Myers here at Texas Motor Speedway. Chase. Great job down there, Tony. Next up on the racing programs, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be our dash redraw, which will take place down by the flag stand. We will get that all set up. We're going to take a quick commercial break here on Flow Racing before we find out who will start where in tonight's dash. Winning doesn't just happen. You have to engineer it. You have to test it and make it better than it was the last time. 
Our engineers have the passion to create the parts you need the way you need them to be. Again, and again, and again. We've led this game for over 40 years, and we design, refine, and perfect every valve train part worthy of the winner's circle. Established in 1983, FK Rod has been the industry leader for both midget and micro racing. Family owned and operated, we take pride in our products and our name because we know you value yours. Visit our website, www.fkrodins.com.